All right, everyone. I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Destin City Council, February 7, 2022, to order. Up first, we got Pastor Steve Ferris, First Baptist Church of Destin. Pastor, would you like to come up and lead us in prayer? Well, Lord, we just want to stop and thank you for the many, many blessings that you give us, that you watch over us. And Lord, I, I thank you for all the men and the ladies and the, and the people in our armed forces and here in this city that do that each and every day. Lord, we just thank you that you've blessed us immensely. And Lord, we just pray tonight for this meeting that, Lord, that you would give us wisdom in all that we do and that we can be pleasing to you in whatever that is. And we just pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Got a pretty good turnout tonight. I'm glad to see that. With the weather being good for ducks, I wasn't expecting a lot of folks here tonight, so it's good to see you all here to participate in our local government. Um, first up is agenda approval, and I'd like to ask the, the pleasures of council that the item under my name, Aqua Alert, a little presentation by uh, Judy Schenk, I'd like to move it to, the, uh, to item one tonight, so her and the Coast Guard and, and the FWC representatives can uh, do their little thing and and go about their business so, so, so second. all right thank you very much um all in favor of any other changes before we vote seeing none let's go ahead let's see where's my little ah, they do. there we go it is working, it is working. There we go. Come on, Ray. <laughs> Ray's working on it now with his little magic wand. He's taking Kevin out of the loop here. I think he was. All right. Sorry about the delay. Eyes have it so moved. So, without further ado, Miss Judy, would you like to come up here and address the council? Just press the red dot, just state your name and address for the record. Judy Schink. And what do you. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm from Aurora, Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure all of you are wondering what in the heck a northern girl is doing down here. And I'd like to share with you um, what happened to our family last February. Uh, my husband went out paddling in the Gulf. His paddle broke, and he was never found. The uh, um, Coast Guard, the um, Fish and Wildlife Conservation people, the sheriff's department did searches for three days and they covered over 9,000 square miles. Um, they did find the kayak and the broken paddle, but not my husband. While we were sitting there awaiting the news, we decided to, on um, our families talking and we were trying to figure out ways to improve the situation. Um, and get more what you guys call eyes on the water. My son came up with the idea of creating an aqua alert similar to an amber alert, except it would involve boaters volunteering to go out and um, go to the sites when uh, the authorities deemed that it's needed. A uh, regular person couldn't do that. Um, and I have been working with all of the entities um, the Coast Guard, the Coast Guard Auxiliary, the Fish and Wildlife people, your, your mayor. He's been working with the sheriff. I haven't met him yet, but I will. And um, we have 
been laying the groundwork to make this into a reality, to develop it here in Destin so that um, registered boat owners or, um, would um, be able to sign up through the Everbridge notification company, which is what your county already has in place, so we're not talking about a new installation of anything in that regard. They are going to do the installation and set up for free. Um, your uh, government actually did a contract for these kinds of services earlier this year, and we are just lucky that we get to slide right on in. It was per perfect timing for us to, to do that if we do this now. Um, the Aqua Alert will not change what they do greatly in regards to the fact that they will still answer the 911 calls, verify that somebody is actually missing and didn't go off, you know, grocery shopping and forget to check in with mom or something like that. Um, when the um, different organizations, the authorities have determined that they would appreciate eyes on the water, then they will go ahead and, um, in, and uh, call the aqua alert and that people would get notified on their phones um, and uh, then the um, people can uh, be told where they're going to be searching. And it's, uh, I have been receiving much support from the different people I've been working with and a lot of encouragement. And I am here today to, uh, in the hopes that you guys would approve putting forward, um, allowing me to continue to develop this plan um, in your city so that uh, Destin would become basically the pilot program for this eventually. Um, and that's what I'm here for today. Go ahead, Teresa. It sounds like a fantastic idea. And obviously you've got the support of the people that run these programs. Um, I don't know if we need to make a motion or if you need discussion, but I think it's a fantastic idea. Uh, the reason I had uh, Judy come here tonight was to share her story and her vision for, for this pilot program to start here uh, with full intent. In fact, with encouragement from the Coast Guard today in the meeting was to make this nationwide. Uh, I wanted to introduce her to you to understand what we're doing. We're going to have the um, uh, lieutenant come up and senior chief come up and share their perspectives from their agencies. Uh, we're going to work, Lance and I are going to work with the um, uh, county because the county administers uh, through the EMC any such uh, alert or program, stuff like that. Once we hash that out with um, um, uh, Commissioner Ponder and the commissioners and stuff, uh, we'll be coming back. And, and asking through resolution language for the for the council to support this program um, it, it'll be a countywide pilot program to start with but uh, we didn't want to do a resolution or, or a motion tonight i wanted to introduce it to you first so when we come back with a resolution you know the driver the driving source behind it judy's worked tirelessly uh, i've been glad to help her and i'm going to continue to help her and, and um, so that, that's the only reason there's no resolution or a motion tonight. I just, this is introductory and we want to give uh, a senior chief if he would like to come up and then we'll, uh, Lieutenant Fulgram, if you'd like to come up and then I'll let Judy come back up and finish up with any comments she'd like to add. Senior chief here? He's coming. Oh, there you are, Paul. Good to have you, senior. All right, good to see you again. Good evening, you, everyone. Brother. I'm Thanks. Senior Chief Corey Palmer, the officer in charge of Coast Guard Station Destin. I work at Coast Guard Station Destin. Um, so yeah, been working with uh, Ms. Judy Shin quite a bit. Uh, I think she's on to something. And so the Coast Guard's mission of providing and promoting a safe maritime environment is one of our highest priorities and one we are dedicated to improving. Uh, the potential to save lives through expanded communication capabilities is worth exploring further. Uh, and we are eager to learn more about how the Coast Guard could play a role in the city of Destin's Aqua Alert program. No, I just had a comment to make. Go ahead now. this 
opportunity to uh, speak. I'm Keith Clark. I'm the captain with uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife. I'm the area commander for Walton, Okaloosa, Santa Rosa, and Escambia County. My agency of 33 of our patrol officers, our responsibility is, unfortunately at times, to do search and rescues. We conduct boating accidents and search and rescues in the woods as well. And unfortunately in my 24 years, I've had quite a few search and rescues. Some are just recovery efforts and some, unfortunately, we're not able to recover their loved one and bring them back to the family. I just transferred back from West Palm Beach um, been over there like last three years, so I wasn't familiar with Miss Judy's situation and, and her husband. But when I found out about the Aqua Alert, I reached out to her and I saw her passion in her voice. I saw her reasoning for the push to have this and having more ears and eyes out on the waterway, assisting agencies like myself, Coast Guard, and the Sheriff's Office would be a great important tool to help us to get their loved ones back quicker. So I'm certainly as a speaker of FWC in support of this program and appreciate your consideration. Thank you, sir. Rodney, you have a comment you'd like to share? Yeah, um, I think thank it's you. a great idea. Th and, thank and you, Thanks Kevin. for everyone for being here. Um, I think it's a great idea and I think it'll, it, it, it'll work and be real successful. I'll tell you why. Um, I work, used to work offshore, 150, 200 miles offshore. Um, and when we would travel, um, the only one person would stay on wheel watch. Everybody else would lay down and, and sleep. Um, and one day, um, a gentleman was on wheel watch, went out by on the back deck, got a deck bucket with a rope on it, had it around his wrist, tried to get him some water, and it snatched him overboard. And they didn't know it for probably two or three hours later. Well, long story short, they, they put it over the radio, was looking for this man. And it was, it was in our general area. Um, and we helped the Coast Guard look for them, but people were from probably 100 miles away, stopped what they were doing, cost them tens of thousands of dollars, and headed that direction to help look for this gentleman. So people on the water, I mean, it's like a tight-knit family. They, you know, when people are in, in need, they, man, they go to it. So I think it'd be a great program. So when this goes out, um, you know, Aqua Alert, Everybody's going to quit what they're doing, fishing, whatever, and go try to help. I think, I think it's a great program. Well, one of, one of the things as a professional mariner my entire life, you know, we get busy talking with our customers, listening to radio, talking on the VHF, and, and when a pom pom pom, which is a public broadcast by the U.S. Coast Guard to alert mariners that there is an issue, and they'll give information, stuff like that, it catches your attention. All of a sudden, instead of you know, not paying attention, while you're going, you don't go out of your way lots of times, but at least you start looking around and, and see if you see anybody in distress. And I think that's the intent behind this program that I think is going to be the most beneficial is we'll probably start signing up licensed charter boat and, and commercial fishermen guys first that are always on the water to, to receive these alerts. If work out the bugs and then we can allow the, the fishing clubs, you know, Fort Wall Beach Sailfish Club or some of these fishing clubs with experienced boaters uh, to, to sign up. And then, and then after that, just the general boating public, you know, people that are interested in, in getting those notices, because especially on recreational vessels, and Johnny will tell you, very few guys stay on 16 and listen. They're, they're on working channels. So getting a notice over your phone, I think, will... Um, in, in, in many cases, it's just you're, you're transversing your normal areas, you're going home or you're going to your fishing spot, but your awareness changes immediately when you receive one of these warnings. And I think that's going to be the long-term overall benefit of this program as we work it out. And, and uh, Judy, through her vision and stuff, we're going to try to uh, put this thing together with the agencies to make it to where it's very easily uh, um, uh, we can we can transplant it in all other coastal counties in the state which fall under everbridge and be a model in the state of florida for the rest of the country so and it's not just about the gulf of mexico or the pacific or the atlantic this is something that they got a thousand lakes up in minnesota and you got the great lakes and stuff like that so this could be a, a countrywide thing johnny yeah just <clears throat> real quick just wanted to reiterate and say thank you miss judy for being here and spearheading this whole deal gentlemen with fwc um yeah, I would, I would just regurgitate what you guys are saying. I don't know how many times we've been out there and guys, guys whose 
radios don't work or they're not using the radio. But I mean, we've got one of, if not the largest fishing fleets in the world. And a lot of those guys are restricted to inside of nine miles where you have cell phone service. But, or they're strung out along the beach. And I think, I mean, every one of them's looking at their phone. They may not all be listening to the radio. So I think this is an awesome idea. It's something I, <clears throat> I would absolutely pay attention to, and I think everybody else around here would as well. So, Miss Judy, thank you very much for doing all this. Miss Judy, any final comments after hearing uh, tonight? And we'll wrap this up and move on to our regular business, and all our guests can go do what they need to do on a rainy, cold night in Destiny. Ms. Judy, I just want to tell you I'm sorry that you lost your husband, but it's a beautiful way to honor him. Go ahead and hit your button, ma'am. So. Well, thank you. Um, for your concern, our family received a wonderful outpouring of support down here um, during it and afterwards. So I thank everybody for that as well. Um, I just wanted to say um, concerns for um, the, the phone system already has seven um, posts already out there. So um, we're not going to be setting up a whole lot of new ones. They're already covering this area. We're just going to be adding this. This is going to be a link in Lincoln. And so a cost factor isn't anticipated to be a huge thing. I'm not going to say it's nothing. I don't know. That's why we're going to be developing it. So, um, and I wish to thank you all for listening to me tonight and taking the time out of your day. Thank you, Miss Judy. All right. We're going to move on to uh, item number two, which is our public comment period. I want to remind everyone that you're limited to three minutes. When you get close to that three minutes, I'll politely remind you to wrap up your thoughts. And um, also, uh, when you come up to microphone, just state your name, your number, I mean, your name and your address for the public record. And uh, this is for items on the agenda and items that aren't on the agenda that you just want to talk about. And, uh, but nothing on any of the public hearings, and we do have a public hearing tonight, so just keep it centered to those comments. And uh, I'll just start, I'll go uh, my right to left tonight. I normally go the other way, but I won't throw you all a curveball. So is anybody over here would like to come up to the podium and begin the public comment period? Don't see anybody? Come on up, ma'am. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Lisa Rockwell, 609 2nd Avenue. Uh, myself and several, many other citizens actually, are rather concerned about the residential development that's currently planned around the airport. Uh, the noise exposure map from 2008 identified several homes up in the northeast corner of the airport that were in the noise zones, and those were recommended to be bought back by the local government to make sure that there weren't homes within the noise zones that were identified. Um, noise zones C and B are considered incompatible for residential development, even with the noise mitigation that must be put in. That's because with windows open, it doesn't mitigate the noise, and also outdoors, there's no problems. I, I yes, gotta sir? interrupt you. Okay. We're gonna have a quasi-judicial hearing on this tonight, or, or at, at the next meeting. So our attorneys ask that how do I want to frame that? You need to wait until the meeting on the 22nd when the applicant is present and other members of the public can speak on it as well it is advertised at that time i'm not calling the shots here this is our <laughs> this is our lawyers <laughs> saying thank you do, i appreciate you, that as well do you want to explain why you made that recommendation yeah it's a due process issue for the applicant plus she can submit anything she wants in writing she can call in she can be present but i'll let kyle if he wants to add anything i agree with Ms. cop um the issue is related to the specific pri property rights at issue here if the the commenter wants to comment more generally on on the issue i think that's fine but if we're talking about a specific piece of property there could be a potential due process issue depending on the actions and, the council and, took no, place. I mean, so. all she has said so far is residential development around north the around the airport. That could have been the thing that we voted down last time. That could have been the thing that's coming next week. That could be the townhomes to the west. She will, if she wants to talk about residential development around the airport and noise zones and what, what she thinks we ought to do, 
I say give her three minutes to let her speak. As, as long you're, as she's not two speaking. two attorneys are recommending, sir, <laughs> I that you don't. Well, it ain't so the, I'll listen. Not the we'll, first we'll, leave that on, we'll leave that on your plate. Yeah. It's not me making the rule. No, I, I got chairman. that. I'm just, I get interrupted by our two attorneys. One of our responsibilities is to mitigate <laughs> it, risk. It, yeah. and, and so they're recommending that these particular comments be reserved I, for a quasi-judicial proceeding. So you guys can make that call. Uh, I'm not going to make that call as chairman. We've certainly provided the advice. Uh, you know, I would just ask if, if you're going to continue, if you could just keep the comments I can keep it on a general yeah. level. General to yes. airport encroachment? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think that ain't where she was going. <laughs> We're going to start your clock over. Okay. And now, and now you know the ground rule. Okay. Okay. So you may Mayor, have to adjust your comments slightly. I will try my Mayor, best to let adjust me them. Ask one quick question: Is yes, it sir. possible for you to come to the meeting they're referring to at the next? Yes. The next hearing. Yes, I can. In that case, it, it seems foolish to me to err on the wrong side of this. Could we could we kindly ask you to come back and give your comments on, on the specific issues during the quasi judicial as, make testimony? I am actually already planning to talk specifically about the development that you're referring to on the 22nd. And tonight, I just kind of wanted to prime the council with some generic information about airport encroachment. I don't see anything wrong with it myself. I mean, that's, that's generic. Okay. Okay. We've been warned. You've been warned. I have, yes. Okay. And, <laughs> and so we will start over and just stay vanilla. I will keep this as vanilla as possible. Thank so, you, ma'am. Okay. You, so may, you may begin. The big issues um, is that there are several things at play. There are avigation easements that are allowed for developments around airports, but avigation easements only address physical issues. They only address things such as building heights and antennas. Avigation, avigation easements don't address the issue of noise whatsoever. The instrument that does deal with airport noise or with airport noise is the airport disclosure statement and that warns potential homeowners of aircraft activity in the area and their proximity to an airport. But it still doesn't actually fix the problem. The reality of airport disclosure statements can be summed up by a statement from the senior executive at the Federal Aviation Administration, where he states, I can testify that the best way to cripple an airport is to allow residential development to encroach. When that happens, noise disclosure documents are a flimsy attempt to rectify an obvious mistake and they fail the test of time. Sooner or later, the affected residents grow weary of the noise, pressure grows for the airport to do something, and airport restrictions are put into effect. And this cycle has been proven time and time again for decades around our nation, specifically since this was addressed by our federal government in 1979. Yet in Naples, Florida, currently residential development is as close as 1,000 feet to the active runway, and they're dealing with immense noise issues and severely restricted operations. Torrance, California, they're as close as 700 feet. Same thing. But the most egregious right now in our country is Santa Monica, California. They're at 400 feet from the active runway for their residential development. A little bit over a football field away. And due to decades of problems with noise, due to that, they are scheduled for official closure this decade. But even closer than the development at Santa Monica is the edge of our airport boundary, which is 300 feet from the runway. And there is currently planned residential development in that area. Now, the Destin Airport brings over $144 million annually to our economy. It isn't a resource that we want to threaten or potentially lose. I've been on the ramp on the west side before when there's an aircraft going to full power to take off, and that ramp is approximately 300 feet from the runway. I have to stop what I'm doing on the ramp and hold my ear as that jet takes off. So I can't imagine anybody in their backyard as close to the airport runway 300 feet from a boundary, having to do that and pause their life every time a jet takes off. Statistics on our airport real quick. This past July in 2021, there were over 11,000 aircraft operations in the month of July. That equates to 370 aircraft operations per day. You do the math on that for a 16-hour day that the tower is open, that's an aircraft takeoff or landing every two and a half minutes. And that's spread out across the entire month. Concentrate that on the weekends and holidays when people want to use their yards and be outside. You're looking at something more realistic to every minute there's an aircraft taking off and landing. So most of the homeowners that want to buy homes in developments, no matter how much warning they're given, most of them really aren't prepared for what they're actually getting into. 
and unfortunately, there's no fail-safes at any other level of government. Federal, state, and county, they warn against this dramatically, but they don't own the land and they can't stop it. You're the only authority on this matter. You are the only one who can steer future issues away from the airport. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right. Mayor, can I ask a question? You, get a, you did a good job of staying neutral. Yeah. Thank you. Mayor, <laughs> what, why are you presenting this to us and not somebody from the airport itself? Um, can I speak about specifics? I believe that it was talked about with the air. I mean, I have emails from the airport director at the beginning saying that they strongly opposed it. However, 10 days-ish later, I got another email saying that they fully supported it. So nothing material changed in that time that I could identify. So I'm not sure why the flip-flop of sediment. And when you first started speaking, you said something about um, so the state or somebody wanted, was going to buy back some houses? Um, it was recommended from the noise study that was done in 2008 that the houses that were already in the noise zone, because we didn't have the contours previous to that, nobody knew. So those contours were given specifically by the FAA-sponsored noise study so that we would know where not to build homes in the future. Okay. Um, okay, that's all I have, Mayor. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. See you in a week, two weeks. Yes. All right, looking over this way. Come on up. It was on. Maya Shoulder, 45 Ferry Road, Northeast, Fort Walton Beach, uh, with Extreme H2O and Dustin Paris sailing. Um, I wasn't at the last meeting. Uh, I did watch it on YouTube, riveting. Um, but I will say, we really, the, the livery industry, we really want to get along with you guys. I, I think it has been a very long, contentious battle. But the tone that I got off of YouTube from the video last week, or last month, really wasn't very positive coming from you guys. If you set a deadline, that's the deadline. I didn't set the deadline. You set the deadline. You gave me till February 28th. On January 20th, you started sending letters and emails to my landlords with six, six weeks left for me to apply. My insurance doesn't renew until March 3rd, so I don't have all my equipment in. So my number, the um, bins that I sent in, I have applied. I'm, I'm, my application is in, it's at 29%. But what I did find really interesting is when I was looking at my last year's application, it's at 60% for last year. It's not done. I didn't get my livery permits last year until I was closed. And on your system, on the city system, I'm not even completed at either of my locations. But you guys are emailing my landlords in a really kind of negative tone. Are you aware? I mean, it makes landlords feel a little unsettled. When I still had, I had not done anything wrong at that point. I still haven't. I have submitted. If you guys want us to get along with you guys, I think we need just a little bit of that back from y'all. You know, there's these, the program that she was just talking about, the aqua program, water sports industry would be phenomenal in helping with that. I have a crew, I've got a fleet of 35 jet skis that at a moment's notice, I could put every qualified dock hand I had out on the water to go help find somebody. I've done it before. I've done it multiple times before. We just want to be treated with the same respect that you guys treat all the other businesses. And if you impose a deadline, that's the deadline we're going to follow it. If you want them in January, then change the date. But if you're going to give us a deadline of February 28th, just respect that some of us have things. I've submitted an application that I will have to re, I'll have to update in the next few weeks when my skis come in and when my insurance packet renews in the next few days. So I just, I want to, we all want to get along. I think it's tone is so important, especially coming from this portion of the city. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, I have a question okay. for you, please, please. Um, you said that the deadline is February 28th. Mm -hmm. Is that for you to actually submit, submit. the application? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then when, when are you, I mean, is there a time frame that the city's supposed to get that back to you so you have your? Well, I mean, I submitted last year on time and I'm at 60% for 2021 last year. Y'all haven't finished. Right. So I did everything I was supposed to do on time last year. All my application. Now we did have some, um, I think we had some DO issues. 
um, parking issues that had to get worked out throughout the year. But, um, you know, if the IRS, I have to submit my taxes by a certain date. They can figure it out, the rest of it, but I have a deadline because they've given me a deadline. Well, I know uh, to speak on the city's behalf, um, we have people that have parking issues and they know they have parking issues. Mm -hmm. So they wait to the last possible minute to submit their application, mm -hmm. February 28th, and then they want the city and then they, and they can't pass it, they can't get through, they can't get approved. So now they want the city to work with them and give I don't them 30 think, days. And for those not, of I'm us- I'm not talking about you now, I'm talking about there's, there's other, cause so, 90 or I say 95% of the applications that went out are affidavits and no change applications because we've all gotten to that point. We all really worked our butts off and went through a whole lot of hoops to jump through last year to get to the point this year where it was an affidavit of no change, a piece of paper, you submit your rosters, you submit your insurance and you're good to go. So really because of the affidavit of no change, the city shouldn't have any. Y'all streamlined the process. Y'all, we, we, we worked with you guys, but you streamlined it. So at this point, I upload a bunch of stuff on the, onto the web, and you guys have all the documentation. I've attested that nothing's changed. You come out and inspect. I, but like I'm saying, I haven't even had my inspection from last year. I got my stickers when I put, my equipment was off the dock on, at one of my locations when I, when I got approved and paid for my livery stickers. So uh, I, I, I'm not, and I'm not trying to do things that, at the 11th hour. I don't think any of us are. We're all running businesses like a lot of you guys have other jobs as well. But we look at deadlines that were given by the authorities that created the deadlines and we manage that time which what works for us. So if you want them earlier, cool. Next year, make us tournament earlier. So, but don't call my landlord on the twentieth when I have forty days left. So, what do you recommend our staff do when yourself or anybody else mm -hmm. submits their application in on the twenty eighth, and knowing they have issues, the same issues they had last year, and now they want thirty days or they want sixty days? If they were approved last year, I mean, they wouldn't have issues because they are getting the affidavits of no change now because they were approved and to streamline the process the city created, those of us who are approved now have an affidavit of no change. Am I not correct on that? That once we were approved in 2021 to streamline the process to make it easier on the business owner, you were guys just gonna make us upload our, our rosters, upload our insurance and upload our um, affidavit of no change. And in that case, then, you know, a week into to March, you guys should, it shouldn't be that complicated. Like I said, I've done what I was supposed to do. Mine's, mine's, mine's submitted. But I just do believe in the business world, a deadline is a deadline. Yeah, and if you want it to be a different deadline, I'm not even gonna say that's a bad thing, whatever, change the deadline. But don't email my, man, my, my landlord when I still have 30 to 40, day, 40 days and, and act like I'm doing something wrong because at 40 days out, I'm not doing anything wrong. I am running a business and following through. So I, I agree with you. Um, does any of the staff, Joey, anybody want to respond to that at all? And one thing I would just note that you do have a couple of livery vessel items on the agenda. They're not quasi judicial or anything. So I'm not saying you can't get into this now, just in the interest of moving public comment along. If you want to, you might want to save it for then. Just, just a suggestion. Great. Fair enough. All right. Thank you. Come on up. Uh, John Stevens, uh, 4025 Indian Trail. I'm not here to talk about livery. I'm talk here to talk about the aqua alert. Um, is there a way in the, um, in the compass registration to have an option where if a business chooses to receive these alerts, I mean, you'll have access to more people apply or um, accepting it. And you think about most of these um, business owners have vessels or are on the water a lot. So I just see it as a way to target more people. We'll add that to our notes. That's all I got. Great Thank job, you. great idea. All right, still working right here, anyone? All right, I'm gonna move over to the next row. Anyone likes, come on up, come on up, ma'am. Hi, my name is Joy Sadler. I live at 337 Calhoun Avenue here in Destin. I don't have to talk about anything about this on your agenda. I just wanted to start off by saying, um, this is something new. 
First, thank you guys for putting some of the stop signs that you've put up in Destin, the one at Maine and Kelly, and the other one at Cybert and Forest. I think it's really helped a lot. But I'd like to ask you to consider to put um, two more in. Uh, when folks get down to Calhoun, they think they've reached 98, and they just fly. I've already lost an animal. I don't want to lose a kid. Um, so my recommendation is um, if you would consider putting a stop sign going both north and south on Calhoun at the corner of Kelly. Um, it's really a hard intersection when you're on Kelly turning south on Calhoun. Um, I have a hard time seeing to make that turn. And my driveway is the first one to the right. So when people are coming around that curve, it's hard for them to see. I've got almost rear-ended several times. And I just think it would help slow down. You've put in speed bumps down by the fire station. That's helped a little, lot down by the parks and stuff. But up a little further, um, I've watched at 2 a.m. cars race, do races down Calhoun. And I just think that, you know, that might not stop them, but at least for some of us other citizens, it might just make us slow down a little bit um, and remember that Calhoun's still part of the neighborhood. Thank you. Michael, take a look at that. Have Michael take a look at that, okay? Thank you, sir. You already had it in your notes, didn't you? All right, anyone else from over here on this deal for, uh, I do want to remind everyone there'll be an opportunity for public comment at the very end of tonight's meeting, so this is not your only chance on anything that we've talked about or done during the course of the meeting. Anyone else? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public comment period. We'll move on to item three, and I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Take a vote. Eyes have it, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, item 4A is uh, the quarterly investment report, and I believe Crystal Strickland is online. I wanted to offer her the opportunity to uh, introduce this item. We also have our representatives from Raymond James. We have uh, both Brian and Steve are both here today. So, Crystal, can you hear us okay? Yes, good evening. Um, this is Crystal Strickland, and uh, we should have our friends from Raymond James here this evening to address the quarterly investment report. So, uh, Stephen, Brian, come on up to the microphone. Good evening. Steve Can, Brian Haugen from Raymond James. Good evening, Crystal. And we know that you have, of course, the materials for the quarterly report. I guess we defer to any questions you have from us uh, or from Crystal on both the quarterly report or anything we've discussed at the previous meeting about the, uh, the evolving uh, conversation about the investment policy statement. Crystal, anything from you first before I look to the council? Uh, no, I'm just here if you have any comments. Roger, silence is golden. Gentlemen, ladies. Any questions for our representatives on our long term? Well, apparently she did. And you guys did a great job with your report. No questions. You got any comments, sir? I would just add that we are knee deep in working with the city and the council on the revisions on the IPS and have made huge strides. And I've got to take my hat off to the colonel here. That's a lot of hours been spent on that thing. <laughs> and Crystal. It's been a lot of work. Crystal's worked her, her tail off on that, too. So it's coming along pretty good. We'll get that process started. I do kind of have a question, if I can throw that in there. Um, this might be just an informal question, but uh, where does this money eventually lead to? What's the, what's the goal of this? Just as more of an open-ended question, I probably should have said in the briefing. Um, what's the goal? Of the, where is this investment going? It's well, there's it's earmarked for different things. Okay. But obviously, a large portion of it is emergency replacement or emergency reserves in mm -hmm. case of that word we don't mention. You know, the yeah. H word. Yeah. Um, as for example. And then the rest is designed to be uh, invested also for that, but also for other tasks and projects that come up over the course of, of time. We've partnered very closely with, with Crystal. She's got a strategic plan lined out. She's got earmarked monies for each plan that the city's got going forward for probably the next 10 years. And so we make sure that the funds are aligned to make sure that they're there uh, if they need be. And if something else happens in the interim, we still got some cushion to make sure we got it. 
I, I have a question for you because we are in tumultuous uh, financial times. What uh, what are some of your concerns for 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 the next 12 to 18 months as far as the impact of the overall economy on some of the strategy that you guys are putting in place now? It's a Crystal? great question. It really is. Um, we literally just were in contact with the portfolio manager, James Camp, this week. Right. And the reason why we were talking to him is because there might be some further assets that might be placed within Raymond James from, from some built up reserves. Uh, but then the question was, what's logical? You know, it, I mean, is it a good time? Is it, is it logical to do that right now? And logically, you guys uh, follow that the Fed is looking to raise rates in the short term. But also, the Fed is also tapering back its purchases of the treasuries. So that means that there's more supply um, with the same amount of demand for treasury bonds. Logically, that means that uh, interest rates in the long end would naturally come down. So on the short end, they're going up, and on the long end, they're coming down, which leads to a flattening yield curve, which gets precariously close to that inversion thing that everybody talks about, where the interest rate on the short end is higher than the interest rate on the long end and has historically led to the R word. You know? So that's kind of where the Fed is uh, in a buckle right now. As far as the city's investments go, any new funds will probably get in the shorter, most guaranteed, super, super safe stuff because the short end, you want to ride that. You want to ride that it, rising interest rate. Um, so you want to stay shorter. And then on the long end side, I'm not really sure yet. I think that I have confidence that Jerome Powell and the Fed actually have their stuff together. RJ, we just did a seminar this afternoon, and they're saying that they think they're going to figure this thing out, which is a tough cocktail, you know, managing all these different aspects of it. But we don't see recession anywhere near we're still bullish on the equity side, but the bond side is, is amazingly precarious. Uh, fortunately, this is an active manager who is one of the best in the world at being able to take advantage of an interest rate market that's just volatile and flat and figure out ways to, to churn that to get to eke out a dollar here and there. But right now, it's been a little bit tricky. I'm just going to answer Bobby's question. If you go to page two on the uh, staff report, uh, that first table up there, uh, we we say we will have three months worth of uh, basically salaries and expenses, and that we will have three months worth for maintenance. So that uh, because as we all know, after an event, cash is king. So if you're waiting to get FEMA to pay you so you can contract to get something done, it doesn't really work that way. And, it does, and if you if that's your plan, it's a bad plan. Then we have the debt service, which we really don't, you know, previous councils have approved uh, borrowing money. So that's something that we really don't have any control over. And then we have the alternate investments and the CDs. Part of that is, uh, you could say, to make sure that our investments keep up with our three months of expenses. So if our expenses are probably going to go up this year, just our personnel costs are going to go up probably five to eight uh, percent. If, if we just follow the average. Well, if we're not making 5 or 8% on our emergency operations investments, then that money would, could be moved into those investments. And so then the rest of it would be for whatever the council determined, uh, you know, for the betterment of the city. So that, that's kind of where those investments are. And their job is to make our money work for itself. No, it's awesome. No, that way we don't have to do it. <laughs> Guys, uh, anything else? You got it? Thank you very much. Thank you. Crystal, anything else before you go back to sleep? <laughs> I wish I could go back to sleep. <laughs> I said that because I know you don't. So any anything to add to that, Crystal? No, I just say the 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 overall goal of our investment policy is to ensure that the cash we have on hand keeps up with inflation. Um, as you know, we receive the bulk of our money once a year uh, when people pay their property taxes. So it all comes in in the um, December, January timeframe. And then I need to keep it safe so that I can pay the expenditures that were budgeted for the rest of the year until the following January when the next infusions come in. Thank you. Thank you. That was a real clear way of saying what Jim said. Hi, Jim. <laughs> she did a good job.
That's her job, Miss Abear, and then we'll move on. Crystal, I just want to thank you for all your hard work and constant uh, monitoring and making sure that we stay ahead of the game. So thank you for your hard financial work, and I'm glad that Mr. Bagby was uh, a team player and helped make all this happen as well. So thank you, ma'am. Right. Thank you. Yeah, we're working on it. Thanks, Jim. Um, all right, Lance, I B. Thanks, sir. Um, item B is staff is uh, requesting council to consider um, renewing the Zeke contract for median maintenance uh, for the remaining six months of the fiscal year. Last fall, uh, council approved them for six months and asked staff to bring it back for another six month uh, approval um, at this time. So at right. this time we have Michael Burgess available to answer any questions regarding the contract. Well, what I'd like to do is I'd like to entertain a motion at this time and then we'll open it up for our council members to do just that, to ask Michael any questions they have before we move forward. So I'll entertain a motion at this time. I'll make a motion. I move that the city manager be authorized to execute a contract ex extension with Zick from April 1st, 2022 to September 30th, 2022. And then I have a follow on question. All right. And uh, do I have a second? second. I'll second. I, I have a second. Go ahead, Mr. Bagby. My, my follow on question is you gave us an alternate motion. I, I don't see why we can't or don't do both. I mean, we've extended this contract but is your is the staff's intent to execute another extension or is it to go out for an RFP or an RFB or what what is your intention after September 30th of this year okay mr. Bagby if we are in the council are, are pleased with the level of service that we've been receiving for that vendor the th six months six month extension that they got back in the fall was the first um, available extension of four possible extensions. But uh, we had brought it before the council as a 12-month uh, extension, but it was reduced to a six-month. So the intention would be to have them perform well enough where we would continue to use their services. Well, my question would be, when will we find out that they are or not? Because that was... My understand my memory, I'll put it like this. My memory was that was there were some people I didn't have a lot of experience with them, but some people weren't ecstatic about the performance and so they didn't want to give a twelve month. They gave a six month so that they we would have this uh I don't want to say reckoning, but we would have this uh review now and so are you is the staff's position they're doing a great job and we ought to be looking to give them a the second annual of their four possible extensions or what what's the review because don't tell me we we don't know because that was the whole purpose of the six months no we certainly know we're in constant contact with Zick. Uh, we receive a weekly report from them we're in constant email and phone communication with them We've been pleased with the level of service we've received, and uh, as it stated in as stated in the uh, agenda item, we uh, it's our preference or recommendation that we extend the contract. Mr. Destin, that essentially was the, the gist of my question. That that was the answer we needed. Thanks. Well, I got Michael. For the is F dot changing the landscape at all? Why don't you sneak it? Yes, sir. I'm glad. I'm glad you asked that because we got some com 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 I got you. we got some communication today that the median beautification project that DOT we've been sitting on for about 18 months will be kicking off as early as next week. And so, from the the area from the Marlar Bridge to Airport Road being the project area, the contractor executive landscaping will have kind of command and control of the medians in that area, and Zick will not be performing services for us in that area during the project. Kevin. Thank you. Great question, Mr. Uh, Wagner. And on that same topic, if they're not performing the services, are we getting charged $37,000 divided by two? Absolutely not. My, my history with contract management prohibits me from paying anything that we don't receive. So I guess my first question is why, well, I mean, if, if I'm going to get a proposal,
for a service for the next six months and they're not going to do it, I would not expect it to be in the contract proposal. They are well aware of this FDOT contract condition. The project was originally supposed to be lit last April, I believe, April or May, and the state received no bids for that project, so it got delayed. But, but Zick is well aware that while that construction contract is uh, going with executive landscaping, they will not perform any services. Subsequently, when the project moves from Airport Road to the county line, that contractor for DOT will have command and control of the medians and shoulders. So not only will they not do the services, as you said, that they are fully aware, they will also not bill for the services, and Crystal is fully aware not to pay any bills that come for that particular zone, I would assume. Absolutely. That we will not pay for any services that we don't receive. Gotcha. I mean, just me individually, I would prefer not to see it on my proposal if it's, you know, if I'm getting something, I'm not going to get the service. Why are you giving it to me? But I guess that's not here nor there. Um, two, I, I have problems with landscaping companies just in general. A lot of times, service providers sometimes where you hire them, they come out, they hit the ground running. It looks amazing. I mean, you're just like, oh, this is great. And then a few months go by, and you kind of forget to keep looking around. You kind of forget about it, and this level of service kind of goes down. I know you guys are saying that you're supportive of them, and that's okay. But what I don't like is when I could drive down Main Street, and you look at the median, it looks like garbage. And if they're out there every single week, what are they doing? What's their recommendations for replacing the sod? If they're checking the irrigation system and it's broken, why aren't we fixing the irrigation system? So what are they doing besides sending in a report that says that they're just out there? Okay, so under the new contract, they're supposed to provide irrigation inspections on a monthly basis. They are in constant contact with my deputy director concerning any kind of deficiencies they find out in the field, but they perform just general landscaping services, mowing, edging, weed bed control, or bed weed control. Uh, the month of February, they'll be putting down uh, pine straw citywide. And then they'll also be doing tree trimming in March. Sure. So, I mean, that's, you know, unfortunately, that's kind of what the issues that I always have because you have your landscaper and you have like a chemical guy. And the landscaper is like, well, that's not me, it's the chemical guy. So the, the grass died, it, it's not my fault. I was just cutting it and there's no more grass there. So I really don't have to cut it, but I'm still going to charge you because I'm cutting over dirt. So we need to have a proactive approach towards our landscape medians. Where grass is dying, I would hope that we would come up here and say, we have a project, we need to go buy ga grass or something. I don't know. But just to let it go to the wayside and look like garbage, and we have a, and we have a contract with people, it's, it's not acceptable in my opinion. So if they're going to keep doing their job, I would hope to have a proactive approach towards the landscaping around the city and not just letting it die down. But um, that's all I had. Thank you. All right, we've had a discussion. We've got a motion and a second. Let's go ahead and take this to a vote. Ayes have it, so moved. Item 4C is a livery vessel update by Mr. Joey Forgio. Mr. Forgio? Yeah, this was asked uh, by um, council last uh, council meeting for a livery update. Yes, can you hear me? I'm sorry. This was for a livery update to see where we stand and uh, which way we're headed. So right now there's um, seven that have completed as of today. Um, four livery companies have uploaded their documents. Um, six have still not, and then one is still going through a process. Um, there's a total of 480 proximate vessels and 297 are registered this far, this far as of today. Um, a, a question to the letters and anything code does, we have to, by law, serve property owner, not a business, a property owner. So a property owner has to know what's going on with their business. It's just the law. So um, that's under Florida State Statute 162. Um, so we did send out reminder letters. Um, and uh, we've been doing it in a process. Another one's gonna go out this week. And just to say, hey, come on, let's get this stuff in there. They can upload it. 
Um, if there's some issues with insurance and stuff, you know, let us know. You know, if you don't get your documents in time, okay, you know, I get it. But um, as long as you're working through the process, you know, we just get your insurance into us. We'll be monitoring it. So that's where we stand of today. All right, Ms. Haber. Well, I have a problem with that. You're sending out letters before the due date. You need to cease and desist that. Until you hit the 28th of February and they don't have their paperwork into y'all, she has a very valid point. You can't notify people that you're, hey, your people haven't sent in their paperwork. The landowners don't need to be like worried that they've got some derelict property, you know, uh, renters, however you want to call it. Get with those that, if you want the projects to turn in sooner, if you want the livery vessels, you know, then give them a 5 January date instead of 28 February if you're going to start sending out notices the so first week. I, let me interrupt you because there's a misunderstanding. Code compliance staff is not sending out notices of violation right now. They sent out reminder letters to the whole livery vessel community just saying the deadline is approaching. Nobody has been sent a notice of violation, so there's a difference. So the landlords are part of the, hey, it's coming up kind of thing, that the letter? Yeah, if you, if you own property with a livery vessel operation on it, you got a reminder as a courtesy to try to help you remind you of the dates that are coming up so that when they approach, you're not like, oh, I was busy for the past few weeks. I forgot that this deadline was approaching. Well, here you have a letter from the city and there's copies of them in the agenda packet. They're very, they're very obviously intended to be helpful. Yeah, and um, I just, I get been getting notices for my annual report on Boat Owners Assistant Training LLC about once a week via email. My deadline's not till May 1st, but I paid it today. So I would have it out of the way. So getting those notices are, I take them as general reminders of what I do have a pending deadline and I need to take care of my business because we, we all get business. So um, you quoted a Florida statute of notification. Could, could you restate that for the record? I, I missed what you were talking about. Anything that code does, like in violations or whatever, I mean, the property owner, we deal with property owners. Um, that, that's something separate. That's we're yeah, talking about separate. notices of violation, ah, which okay. did not go out. Which not notices what's going of violation on. Just, go out under Roger chapter Dodger. 162. So, that might be what caused the confusion. Yeah. So, so that's why I wanted to bring some clarity to that is, you know, you, you, you're, you're given a courtesy notification to everybody involved property owners, livery vessel owners, that there's a deadline. If they want to wait till the very last day, 12.01 a.m., whatever, however that works out, that's their right. But at least the city's not responsible for the failure for them to apply within the deadline. Exactly. And I think Joey's trying to also say that the reason they're going to owners is because if we do get to the stage of violation after March 1st and someone's not in compliance, the owners had the reminder as well so they can talk to their tenants. But we're not, and, and that might be what was confusing Council Member Abair is um, that reference to Chapter 162, but those have not gone out yet because you can't be in violation yet. My other question is if they're at 60% for last year's, is there any way to clarify the computer systems that they're at 100% that if they go affidavit, no changes, that they go through the system like at warp speed because that's why we made them do those 58 pages last year? I'm checking into that right now, and it, it might have been a glitch. It, it might be the workflow when we swapped over from one to another, so I'm looking into that, and that's going to be rectified tomorrow. And then, you know, they're already in the system. They're already there. They're new. We uploaded their new stuff. It's there. All they got to do is go in and freshen it up. Yeah, I just, the only thing I would ask is, and I haven't read the letters, if y'all could send me a copy of the letters, I'd appreciate that. Because there's a guy who sends out letters routinely to property owners. Uh, you know, the first is, this is a courtesy letter. That's the first line I always put on it, and the subject is courtesy letter. Uh, and, and these may say that. Just a reminder that this has to be done by this date. If you need any help from us, please contact us. Real simple. It doesn't have to be a full page. It doesn't have to be, and if you don't do this, this is what could happen. This is a courtesy letter. When we get past the 28th, 
then then you can put on that other hat but we're we're not even close to the 28th mr smith uh, thank you sir um mr bagby just so you can reference there's letters in our packet here um, that they sent out They're, they are in there just in case you wanted to look at them um Well, first of all, ma'am, thank you for uh, coming tonight and speaking. Um, I, I just lost my train of thought for a second. Uh, oh, yes. Okay. So, as some of the other fe fellow council members mentioned in the mayor, renewals, reminders, are common courtesies across a lot of businesses and industries. IRS does also send out, you, you mentioned the IRS, they send out reminders as well. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with our staff and our city sitting out reminders, nice reminders, about this process. You have every right to wait until February 28th. That's fine. And, and they, I think they agree and they accept that there's a possibility that somebody could come in on the last day and apply. And that right is yours and everybody else's that might want to wait. But last year when we first got up here, some of us, this was the, the, the first topic that was going on. And it was hot and heated and heavy. I mean, it was big time for at least two or three months. There were deadlines. They weren't met. There was finger pointing going on. So there's a lot of confusions going on. Whose fault is it? Is it theirs? Is it ours? Our staff took some blame for it. Delivery vessel operators took some blame for it. So here we are in a new year. And a system that has been put in place we're trying to just send reminders out. And I appreciate the staff for putting together a proactive approach towards what's going to happen if delivery vessel owners don't follow the, 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 uh, the deadline. Because that way there's no confusion. They gave us a plan that they're going to follow here on our attachment. It tells us exactly what's going to happen. No confusion at all. So that way, the first, uh, set, the next meeting we have in February or the first meeting in March, there's no questions if somebody didn't do the, the registration process. And, and I get it. You don't need to keep reminding me 17 times. That's fine. Just take it and throw it in the trash can and then just submit it whenever you're ready. That's fine. You know, I got five notices from the Department of Business for the sun, uh, Florida Sunshine, Florida Sunbiz. Remind me to renew my business license. I gotta do it. If I don't do it, they charge me $500 to make it active again. It's a costly situation. So, um, you know, uh, I have a relationship with many livery vessel owners, a good relationship. I know other council members do too. So, and I know our staff does. So, I know that was your opinion to say about our relationship and our attitude towards things. I have a great relationship. I go down the docks, I talk to different owners, I meet with them, I've talked to them about this particular process. You know, so the relationship's there. We're happy to work with all of them. So I, I'm, I'm grateful for all of you, grateful for our staff, and I'm supportive of what they're doing. Um, and you know, and that's, 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 uh, that's all I had to say. Mr. Bagby, and then I'll make yeah, a final just, comment. Just, we'll just vote. quick no, question. We don't, have, we don't have a vote. This is an update. Go ahead. Because the letters that are in our packet are to livery owners and operators. Is that the same letter you sent to the property owners, or did you send a different letter to the property owners? That's the same letter. So the one just says, dear property owner. The same letter that got sent. That's the same letter that was jacketed to go to everyone. Um, Didn't it? No. Okay, say? she's shaking her head. No, I, just send me a copy of what you sent to the property owners, not the livery owners and the livery operators. I'll pull everything. Okay, thank you. There's three letters. They're dated. They are, they're all to livery November, owners December, and operators. Right. December 8th, November I, I 1st, and January 18th. I read them. Those yeah. three went to owners and operators. So, number one, if it goes to a property owner, it ought to say, dear property owner. It shouldn't say livery operator or livery owner. Okay. 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 Thank you. The now you understand. The now you understand. Thank you. The property do. owner doesn't need to be told Thank three you. times yeah. before 28 February, hey, your people need to get in here and, <sighs> and get their code stuff updated. Maybe in January, send that one out. But the November and December, 
it should say in courtesy in January, hey, just so you know, we've let your livery operators and owners know they're due by 28 February. So the property owners are not bent out of shape because they're lending their land to people that are derelict on their turn in of d documents and monies, et cetera. I mean, I get that you want to send it to them. Yeah, it is good because you got people like business owners that get notified, hey, pay this or you're going to end up being derelict. But a property owner that's lending their land to them, maybe only one letter in January as, hey, as a courtesy, your livery operators, your livery owners have until 28 February. And they don't need all that compass information. Hey, they need to go here, here, here. Just a two or three liner. Can we clarify that's what we've sent to the property owners so they're not freaking out that they've got some derelict livery operators and livery owners, tenants doing whatever. Thank you. Reminds me of cat licking over spilt milk. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have to disagree. I mean, it's a courtesy letter. I'm reading it right here, whether it's to the landowner or the operator, it's to the same entities. These people are all in the business. One guy's renting his property out to, and this other guy's paying him and it has please in it three times. It starts with please, it ends with please. And, and not only does it say please, but it says if you have any needs, questions or questions, please contact us so we can assist you in, in what's going on. So that's not hostile. That's a friendly reminder. When you say please, you get a cookie in my house. So, you know, I, I'm, maybe I'm shouldn't be aggravated to, to the discussion, but our staff is trying to be nice and informative and prevent getting complained about because they don't ever tell people what the hell's the, they're supposed to do. So I have to disagree. Thank you for what you guys are doing. I'm gonna stand up for the staff on this one. Kevin, go ahead. I just wanna throw, uh, make a motion if I could on this agenda item. I'd like to direct city manager to direct staff to follow the provided plan for co-compliance 2022 livery vessel registration enforcement. Got a motion? I'll second it. Any further discussion? I'm sorry, yeah, motion is to direct city manager to direct staff to follow the livery vessel registration enforcement plan that was provided in our packet as written. And that's a motion. I do have a second. predicated on no gray areas and here's the plan and I'm hoping that they're going to follow it as written. All right, let's go ahead and take a vote. He just, he's, it's just an attempt to put it on the public record. Good job, Kevin. Eyes have it so moved, sir. Thanks, sir. Here. Mayor, before, oh, down here. before we move on, ma'am, what letter are you referring to? So the first couple of letters were sent directly to us as livery operators. Um, the one on the, it looks like it was sent on the 20th of January, were sent to my landlords, both of them, and it was directed. Um, it does, this time, it, it still says livery operators, all concerned, but the first thing is property owners. So and he was concerned. I mean, he, he immediately forwarded it to me. 12 minutes after he got it. Um, what's going on here? How, is, is this something that we need to get taken care of? And I said, I have until February 28th to get it taken care of. So what, um, what yes, letter is different? The word please is used in it. I'm not saying, but I, I don't know. My landlord doesn't fill out my application. I do. My landlord doesn't, you know, he, yes, he does have my insurance, but he doesn't have my, my roster of my, my equipment. So notifying my landlord, is that a, what I, I don't understand if code, does that mean, if I'm violating something, then you have to notify my landlord, or do you only you can notify my landlord if you know you think I? I think we answered. I think we answered that. It, yeah. It's a courtesy to your landlord and okay. to you. It's okay. Them. All right. Thank you. Well, we've already voted on that particular item. So, Lance, let's do a presentation. 
Thank you, sir. Um, full disclosure, I have requested staff to send out another reminder letter at the end of this week. So I, because three weeks from today is the deadline, and so they, you can blame me for that because I want to make sure that everyone is aware that three weeks from today is the deadline. That's all I'm, that's all I'm going after. So what happens after the deadline? First, they need to be reminded and reminded and reminded that the deadline's coming. What's going to happen after the deadline? Okay. They get violated. After, yeah, after the deadline, okay. the property owner can be fined. He's the only person that's going to be fined in this situation. And I think I'm on the mayor's side. Any letters that are sent to me notifying me as a property owner that I'm about to possibly incur $500 a day fine because one of my tenants hasn't done, I appreciate that. Like I said, thank you, city staff. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Um, next up, uh, we have 60% plan update on the Crosstown Connector. Lewis, you want to take this lead? Uh, yes, real quick. Um, good evening, Mayor. Good evening, uh, Council Members. Uh, last June, I believe, um, after a couple of uh, workshops, um, you directed um, city staff to go ahead and prepare uh, the 60% plans, incorporating the findings of those workshops. Uh, so we're here this evening to uh, ensure that we have indeed incorporated the findings into the redesign of the Crosstown Connector uh, and uh, seek your approval to move to the 90% uh, and hopefully we can get this project moving. So this evening our presentation is in two parts. Uh, the first part is requested last time to give you a history of how we got here. Uh, and then the, next, the, uh, the following part, second part, will be uh, to give you the status of the update. Um, I got two engineers here this evening uh, who will amply go through those updates for you. Uh, Joe, you're going to start, right? Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, the first portion of the presentation is the historical timeline and the milestones of how we got here. Um, starting in October 2014, the original contract with Adkins uh, was signed. Uh, by August 2015, we had the 30% set of plans. There were several workshops on alternate intersection designs. Uh, March 26th, 60% set of plans. And then uh, starting with some of the land acquisition processes, um, May 2017, 90% set of plans. Um, working on trip grants and continuing land acquisition uh, process. Uh, July 2019, the PD&E study was ready for signature by the city and the original contract with Atkins was, was stopped, uh, not, count, not, not canceled, but just stopped. City Council had voted to redesign the uh, project from a four lane to a two lane roadway section and then revise the PD&E study accordingly. Uh, on May 2020, the city re-engaged Atkins uh, for a quote for redesign for the two lane roadway and revised PD&E study. Uh, August 2020, the current contract with Atkins was signed. November 2020, the 30% set of plans came through. Uh, July 2021, a 60% set of plans um, was reviewed. City Council directed a redesign to reduce the right of way, uh, one by removing the bike lanes and adding the multi-use trails outside of the right-of-way. Um, also by adding a 12-foot median 
and uh, providing some small trees or shrubs similar to in nature but not crepe myrtles. And uh, at this point, in De actually it should say December 2022, the 60% set of redesigned plans uh, were delivered to the city. Um, Uh, excuse me, you're right, 2021, December 2021, the 60% set of plans uh, redesigned to meet city council's directive were submitted. Uh, based on the council directives regarding the right of way and multimodal uh, elements, uh, these design changes were incorporated by uh, Atkins Engineering. <coughs> And I will turn it over to uh, James Park with Atkins uh, for the accompanying PowerPoint presentation to highlight these items. Yes, I got the microphone. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, thank you for having me here to uh, give you this update on our 60% plans. My name is JB Park. I'm the project manager with Atkins overseeing this project. Uh, so, as Joe did a, a good synopsis of where we've come from, where we are currently, um, we have submitted the 60% plans back in December. And uh, currently, plans are under review. We've already received some comments um, from, from the city, but we're waiting on a few more. Internally, we're discussing and starting to make those changes. Uh, permit application is ongoing for the Northwest Florida Water Management District. And again, as Joe mentioned, at the June 7th and July 19th council meetings, um, the items that were requested were the 12-foot medians, the 40-foot right-of-way for the roadway, relocating the five-foot bike lanes off of the roadway itself, um, landscaping within the center median, and the meandering multimodal path um, around the ponds. So we have incorporated those items. Um, I'll just go through and you know, show some highlights and the plans progression that show those items. So here's a typical section of the roadway as it stands right now with the revised roadway right-of-way footprint. As you can see, it's uh, the 12 foot median and then immediately adjacent to the back of curb, you have the roadway right-of-way lines. Um, all the elements outside of that will be city-owned property uh, to be designated as parks, um, but not to be owned or uh, future development for roadway construction. Also in this 60% design progression, uh, we have added the new dry retention pond, and as you can see highlighted in yellow, that is the meandering path, 10-foot uh, shared use path. Also to the north of the Destin Connector Roadway is a 10-foot shared use path as well. Um, not highlighted in yellow, but it is on both sides of the roadway. The landscaping is shown here. Um, as Joe mentioned, not crepe myrtles in the media. <laughs> I know you're all very fond of those. Um, small shrubs and trees in the median and then Along the path and bordering the right of way, you have screening trees, canopy trees, um, you know, specific types to be coordinated at the later design phases. One of the main items of development was uh, developing the 3D corridor model, which helps us visualize the project, um, also create cross sections um, that goes into. In the next phase, we'll use that for quantities and cost estimating purposes. Um, so in doing so, we, we developed that with the project and uh, further refined our grading and drainage plans. Another notable element of the 60% design is developing the maintenance of traffic plans. Uh, so that, that's a big 
effort of work, um, we've included that in the 60% plans as well. And just another element to point out, um, we have created the turnaround at Sandalwood Drive um, and then Sandalwood Court just to the south of it that will connect directly to the Destin Connector Road. Upcoming tasks and milestones um, as we progress towards the 90% plans, uh, we will incorporate any comments from the city. We will finalize the elements shown in the 60% plans, a lot of those, um, you know, refining those calculations, uh, finalizing design elements, making sure everything is set for 90%. <coughs> Working on quantities for the entire project, which then go into the cost estimate. Um, notable project milestones coming up. 90% uh, plans are in April, and then the 100% plans in um, July. So with that, that's my update, but I would be happy to answer any questions. We got a few already popping up. Mr. Right. Beston. Thank you, Mayor. The pond that I see is an addition that's in the, the old campground, is that correct? The the large pond, Pond 1. I'm not sure what the previous parcel is. Um, well, that, I think that's it. Okay. It my, is. my question is, how big is the pond? It's That's an area that we had designated to be the public park area. And I was wondering how large the pond is. And is that perhaps a pond Mr. King suggested we should have a fishing pond. Is it suitable for that, or is it just a pond that we're going to have? Now, there? now known as Johnny's Pond. <laughs> and that's that's my question. The pond is looks pretty big. Yes. And where was the stormwater going prior to that? How so, big is it? So I don't know the figure on on size. Um, I will say that they are designed as dry retention ponds, uh, based on our ground elevation out here and the elevation of the roadway. Uh, the water table is significantly low. So to have any pond features, water features, um, fishing ponds, the logistics to dig deep enough to get standing water um, you know, is, is likely not feasible. Um, in, terms of, in terms of the park space, I believe that's designated for the north section of the roadway, um, opposite side of pond one that we're seeing in the plants. Okay, so it's not standing water pond, is that what you're telling me? Correct. So, so they can't be Mr. King's fishing pond unless we have some of those catfish <laughs> that walk out and go find water and come back. Now known as Johnny's Dry Pond. <laughs> Can we rename that? I don't want it to be named after me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure, I'm not sure that feature is one that I would support. It looks like it's taken up a pretty large part of that property. Surely there are other ways to store the stormwater runoff. So that one, I need more details on. And, okay. and I'll be happy to sit with your people or the staff. The other question is, or one of the other questions, the roundabout that is on uh, Beach and Legion. Yes. There have been several discussions about that roundabout um, and how it will affect traffic flow. Uh, one of the things that we have expressed and I will continue to express is we can't put a speedway through the heart of town like that. We already have that on Airport Road and we've had several fatalities. Roundabouts tend to lend themselves to that. So absent some really solid ways that we can calm the traffic and slow it down, then I would not be in support of a roundabout at that location. Another, another question that we need to look at. Okay. Um, in review of the traffic report that was done um, in the initial phases of the project, um, on the south side at Benning and Azalea, uh, that was analyzed and determined to be a um, always stop. And then at Beach and Legion, that was determined to be a roundabout, either signalized or roundabout. Um, but then looking further, the geometry itself um, 
works specifically well for the roundabout because of the skew angle that's required. Um, looking at other types of intersections, you know, the, the intersection has to come in fairly perpendicular. There's a little bit of leeway. Um, so as we would realign for a signalized or an all-way stop, um, we'd be looking at additional right-of-way takes along Legion Drive uh, to make that happen. And I understand that argument. Yeah. I also, with all due respect, have dealt with numerous, numerous engineers over my time here and found one group says something can't be done and another group that says absolutely it can be done. It's just you have to tell us to do it. Sure. So I'm not saying that I'm going to be absolutely opposed to it, but I would like to see what other traffic calming measures you can suggest and your team can suggest so that we don't create a raceway through town. Absolutely. Yeah, and roundabouts do have those opportunities. Um, we can adjust the pavement markings, as simple as that. Um, as drivers feel a narrower roadway, you know, so maybe at the approach to the roundabout, we taper those lane widths to 10 feet. Uh, and if, if you could, and I appreciate those suggestions, sure. could you look at the entire corridor as, as one project that we can put other traffic calming features so that we can slow it down on the whole thing, which is what we need to do or we're going to have a real mess there that no one will really be happy with us. Uh, you know, we had the lady talking about Calhoun. There's a speeding problem on Calhoun, and there, and there will continue to be until we take action. I don't want to build another road that we have a speeding problem on Absolutely. when we can fix it up front. Those are my two comments at the moment. Thanks, uh, sir. But I am interested in the pond, retention pond, and see how much of our potential park that's going to take up and if there are any alternatives. Absolutely. Uh, Ms. Schmidt. Thank you. Thank you for being here as well. Um, do we have a, I'm just curious, in, in the summer, I, I recall a lady on, on the screen presenting yes. something to us, previous project manager, and now you're the new one? Yes, previous project okay. manager was Jessica. Jessica. Um, I've taken over for her. No though, worries. So. Um, uh, do we get any kind of like, from what I could see, we've used got you guys both times on this project. First time, then we started over now are here again so you guys love the city I, you know just, here's, here's our money um, so continue on what mr. Destin's talking about when I look at the me uh, meandering path that you highlighted in yellow around that pond to me that's the south that's the south side of that road yes and that's the side that we did talk about at the summer to do some sort of green space so as it is, can I go out there and throw a ball, kick a ball in that green space that pond two? Just don't send it out in traffic. <laughs> um, I mean, there's, there's a walking path around. Is that to, uh, to have people just casually walk around a dry pond? Yes. So yep, then, with, well, yeah. I, am, am I able to go into that green space to use it recreationally or catch butterflies or whatever? Yes. Or is it like a don't enter the retention pond type of signs? No, it, it wouldn't be it's wouldn't dry. that condition. Yeah, it would be a dry, dry, de sure. dry depression. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I guess I am a little confused, though, is because I thought at a summer meeting we were going to talk about designing that, but it sounds like <laughs> it's designed already, and it's a dry pond. Yes, and uh, yeah, and okay. I'm sorry, I'm no, not you're... was I wasn't part of the the initial coordination. But but I... it's it's a stormwater management issue there. You Correct. got to have a swale yeah. for the tropical storm or the hurricane that Correct. we're going to get. I understand. Most of the time it'll be dry, but it could fill up with water. So, so is it is it your or staff's so we don't have recommendation that we'll be able to do something there? like we talked about in the summer, to possibly have a more leisurely green space? Engineering. Engineering, like. So there is the vacant green space on the north side of the road. Um, from what I've understood coming into this project, that's what was earmarked for the park okay. or green space. Can you go back to the, the slide with the yellow? Yes. Please. If I, I'm not an engineer, so I don't know what the lines all mean, but the, the dash line that says, exist r slash w it's going left to right is that a property line or yeah that would be the existing right away so, so it would be it would 
to the right side, just off the page, you see how the road dips down. There's open land to the north side of the connector. So that's not where our line would be, like, that's not the boundary property line right there. On the top, top page, yes. So that line going left to right that's the property. is the property yes. line. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that to the north of this new road, there's a lot of green space? There is. So between the edge of the road and that line? Yes, and it continues off to the right of the screen as, as the connector dips down. It's just not pictured here. Okay. And all you of mean the to ponds, the east of to the east of beach? Is that what you're saying here? Like to, to the in in between Benning and Beach, which is obviously that's the limits of the connector. But this whole design is between Benning and Beach, right? Yes. And that's beach where the roundabout is, right? Right. So to the so to east, the east of that. is Legion. Yes. West. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm adding more confusion. Gotcha. Right. Yeah, I'm sorry to confuse you. I'm just trying to understand the green space that we were hoping to design on this huge parcel that we have. That sounds like it's gone. Between the two yellow lines is all green. Sure. Um, That's a half a mile. Mr. Destin? It, it, is there a possibility to get an architectural drawing? I can look into that, yes. Okay. Charge it to, charge it to the city manager. He can, <laughs> well, I'll make the motion before this is over with to ask you to do that and bring one back to us so we can look at it. Absolutely. So we're having uh, vision issues here. Uh, yeah, it's all right. So but between the summer and, and at, at the summer meeting, we had the 60% plans designed, right? Yes. In the summer. And then now we're here, and then potentially we're looking at between now and two months from now having 90 plans. So can you tell me, is it, was it a transition of the position, where, why it takes the past six-plus months to get where we are tonight, and how we're going to go from 60 to 90 in two months? Is that really possible? Well, the time frame for the previous um, you know, was going back, doing some uh, redesign efforts, okay. and you know, changing. So that added time frame to what we. So this is a realistic schedule. milestone: thirty more percent in yes. the next two months. Gotcha. And then you might not know the answer to this, and that's okay. But how does this milestone timeline with Atkins correlate with the funding for the property acquisitions? And we talked briefly about that, but I don't think we got down to the calendar of it. Jeff, you want to answer that? Yeah, I'd be glad to. Uh, we have funding right now in the state's fiscal year and uh, funding set aside for the state's next fiscal year for acquisitions. So we have funding right now to acquire properties? Yes, we do. To, enough to acquire all the properties? Or we're needing the next fiscal year's funding as well? We will need that, and depending on where the acquisition prices come in at, sure. there may be a deficit. And the next fiscal year for the state is? I believe it starts in July. July? Gotcha. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's it. I guess my only, you know, I know we're not there yet, but if a motion's made as written and that's the motion that gets passed, there's no more you coming back and answering some of these questions. We're moving on to 90%. And everything that we're kind of throwing out here tonight is just, ah, right? When you're moving on to 90%. Correct. And, okay. Just making and, sure I understand know, the motion correctly. Usually the opportunity to make changes is at that 30% stage. Sure. Um, you know, so even now this would require a significant rework. You know, for sure. So it sounds like between the summer and now, it would have been nice if we would have had our staff or somebody present a design plan for this green space that we're hung up on now and now we don't we just have make we, the vote tonight or we're we did delay do again. that during the workshop and this is it and this is so this is it is that, so that's, that's i mean correct. this is this is, this is, what we this asked is the best for. of the best then right this is what we asked for. that's why i was asking if they stood behind that right making sure i'm understanding okay and i, this I will is it, say I this will is say the green the, space thank <laughs> you uh the the pond siting um locations that was handled in the pd e phase 
Um, so I believe those have been in you know the, the current locations you're seeing them you know from way back when the, the project had started and those are based on soil suitabilities land acquisitions um, you know so it gets the optimal place for those ponds and, and, and you showed us earlier in your earlier slide the recommendations we made at the 30 percent point have now been put into this plan we we did the sidewalks the way we wanted we got the median the way we wanted the road width the way we wanted got to dress the uh, roundabout a little bit but sure. th that's a that's a detail that uh, you know doesn't need a new plan basically correct um, so that's where we're at right now we we got a bunch of people lined up here so I'm going to shut up to allow them to uh, press on. So, uh, Rodney, you're up, sir. Thanks, sir. Um, I have the same concerns with the, the, it just looks like there's a lot of storm water. It looks like one of the ponds is roughly six feet deep. Um, I don't know why we, it looks like we got more storm water than we actually have road. Um, but anyway, um, and my next question is, is, is why is it going to take seven months to get 100% complete? Is that... I mean, is nobody just working on this all the time, or is that you just have, did you have a timeline that says we got to have it done by this point, so just working on it as your leisure, but we got to have it done here? How's that planning out? So the schedules are based off of um, you know the major work items that we need to complete. So moving forward to 90s, um, as I mentioned, developing the quantities, um, incorporating comments, taking the the plan elements from 60 to 90 percent. Um, those all have a certain level of effort associated with them. Um, and then also included in that, which gets overlooked frequently, is um, time frame for city review, um, consultant responses, um, you know, then coordination meetings, and then once design's complete, you know, we do a thorough QC review. Um, you know, so the, the active design phase isn't that full three months. It usually boils down to about a month you know once you consider all those other factors okay so there's i guess there's no way to to get this done in 90 days no matter what how much you want to pay for it that's what it sounds like to me um it, it just always baffles me that there's so much time goes into a project like this time and money and as soon as you stick a shovel in the ground there's a change order or something we run into that we didn't see or I mean, it's like airport road that was you know that was horrible um the stuff they ran into there that was been there for years and so, um anyway i was just curious why it took so long to get something like this together um and a question for staff are, are we working on any type of grant money or anything for this project yeah we have um acquisition money from fdot um for this fiscal state fiscal year and next state fiscal year we have uh, construction money um from the tdc that's in, being held and i don't remember the fiscal years there's three fiscal years i think it's held in so and that's do you remember the amount off the top of your head three point i believe it's just over three million yeah we i thought i heard somebody say we didn't have enough money to buy the property yet i we don't know the answer to that yet um because of the way property values have been increasing here we probably will not have enough to cover the full amount um that we budgeted and i think these uh, grants were applied for seven six years ago so at that time they would have covered the cost if we would have moved, moved it forward on that schedule so we i mean we're no, and we probably don't have enough money. We, there's no reason to try to look for grants to see if we can get approved for anything like that, or? No, we, we're still working on it. I don't know if Crystal is still online, because she had some ideas, too, of ways we could um, help fund these projects. Yeah, I'm, I'm still here, Lance. I'll, I'll just say the uh, we have $2.7 million right now for right-of-way acquisition from dot uh some of that is going to the professional services to do the appraisals and other things so i estimate we have about 2.2 million right now that we can immediately apply towards uh, acquiring the parcels that we need uh, when we add in costs of relocations uh, and looking at the current uh, today's values actually looking at the october values of those properties it looks like we're about one million dollars short 
Um, so the grant will cover 2.2 million and we need to find another 1 million. And um, yeah, I'm working on options right now. So are we actively looking for grants or for that million dollars or do we just wait till we actually need it and then waste another year looking for grants and stuff? Well, we have the $2.7 million grant right now. Um, so to address the shortfall, I've been looking at the financing side and our grants project manager is looking at the grant side. Okay, thank you so much, Chris. Mr. Mr. Brinker, clarification, that grant is what, we're, what, is what you said a minute ago, that we're gonna get split up in the two fiscal years, right? That's not just this fiscal year grant. That grant is, we're getting funding this year and next year? That is correct. Okay, thank you. We've been awarded a certain amount and we can uh, purchase a certain number of parcels right now with what we have. And then uh, the remainder of that grant will be available to us effective July 1st. Johnny. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being here. Thanks for all your hard work. Um, you know, if, if you're not familiar, if you're, if you've lived in this place for any amount of time, this is whether good or bad, very personal to all of us. So uh, thanks for taking the heat. Sorry for, uh, Sorry for all of it, <laughs> um, but we, we really appreciate you. Uh, so my question was just for clarity: the the pond A, A B one two three, all the retention bonds that we have. I looked at this from an overview. I didn't dive into all the minor, all the detailed pages, but um, the big pond, pond two, is those are one foot elevation lines. Um, yes. So all this, so this, so what we have here is the is the necessary amount of retention ponds or drainage that we need. Correct. So there's no way to get rid of any of that. Because if they don't hold water and fish, I mean, who really wants them, right? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just messing with you. Uh, I get it. So, no. <laughs> yeah. Answer the, answer the question. Um, yeah. Is is, so that's what we, I mean, we need every square inch of this. Because I think what we want is, what we would like for this project is, and I, I'm not trying to make any changes here, but if we can get more green space over time, that's valuable to us. Correct. And yes, the answer is that pond is sized. All the ponds are sized to accommodate the necessary storm events. And um, I'm not a drainage engineer myself. I'm, I have a roadway background. Um, but they are sized to accommodate that 100-year storm event. So that monster storm that blows through, these dry ponds can accommodate that volume. And they're designed as dry retention um, based on like I said, the, the soil conditions, your opportunity for discharge. Um, you know, so going back to the pond siting report, pd and &E, uh, these were the recommendations. And um, part of the design progression, our drainage engineer, the drainage group, um, is constantly tweaking and developing based on the new impervious areas that we're adding with the roadway and sidewalks um, you know, to make sure that can be handled because um, ultimately, yes, we want to provide as much sidewalk, green space, um, dirt is money. So if we don't have to excavate, you know, we don't propose that. Thank you, sir. Um, and one other thing, this is for staff. We, I've had several people reach out, um, property owners and tenants. We talked about this in our uh, briefing uh, meeting. Um, there, I know there are some folks, and, 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 and if I'm sure you all have taken care of your side of it, and if not, um, there's several folks that want answers on um, how their properties are going to be affected, when they're going to need to leave, who, who's, we, y'all know what I discussed as far as what compensation and who's owed what. Um, so for the record, I'd like to uh, move forward on working with property owners and tenants, and obviously we have to, otherwise we can't build this, but that's all I got. Yeah, I'd like to comment to that. Um, we are waiting for this meeting here, so the 60% plans could be reviewed by council. And then once uh, we have your blessing to move forward, um, Marsha Hayes is ready to go ahead and begin negotiations with property owners. And uh, all that's prepared to take off. I just wanted to get to this point to make sure we weren't gonna have any changes that might affect right away acquisitions that would be needed. That's great, thank you. That was information I didn't, I wasn't familiar with. Thank you, sir. Mr. Wagner. When did you sign on? I signed on in November. <laughs> I think I beat you by a month or two. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we got that in common. Um, I, I definitely think there needs to be, I think a word I, I heard today at my briefing was imagineering on this. Um, 
I mean, j my main focus would be with pond two. If there's any way to reduce the left side and just dig it deeper. I know one of the biggest things is the side slope ratio, that three to one that you gotta keep. But if there's any way to have like a south side on pond two, on pond two retention pond, or I'm sorry, retention wall, that would give us more volume to dig into and just take it away from the left side of the pond. So I, I know we, can't, we have to have the pond for retention, but if there's any way to go deeper with the retention, put the rails on, and that allows us to give a little bit more volume and just recede it from that left side and give us a little bit more green space on that side. I think that's what we should be fighting for is the left part of pond two. And if there's ways to get a couple feet down, that would give us volume. Um, so that would be my comment. The other, other one would be uh, on beach going north to south, there's a non-ethanol gas station there. So, and our, uh, uh oh, I had a Kevin moment. Um, lost my notes on that. Uh, but th so the main thing being the, uh, the boat launch there. So that's a north to south boat launch for um, the roundabout there. I just wanted to kind of throw that out there as a comment. If, is it accessible for a boat vehicle to make that curb? Have we put any thought into like making that a little bit more of a handicap wiggle room for people hauling trailers north and south on that road would be my other just kind of comment. Yes, so the roundabouts, um, they are run with a software called AutoTurn. Okay. So we model different vehicles. Um, you know, the design vehicle typically is a semi-sized truck. Okay. Uh, so accommodating that for a boat trailer, even a large one, should be no issue. Okay. Um, to stay within the roadway footprint. Mm -hmm. um, some wiggle room for that. Roundabouts are designed with that center trying to go back it's not letting me there's a center apron on the roundabout okay so it's a raised concrete um, it's meant for trucks to over track mm -hmm. yeah, trailers seen that. anything like that yeah we've seen 18 wheelers going to AOC <laughs> yeah you know. all right cool that was my main thing with the trailers but I think that's what I would be wanting in a redesign or just something to help accommodate us I mean this isn't what I got excited about when I was running in the spring um, I thought there was gonna be two vertical parks of landscaping and now we have big ponds. I, I know they need to be there. They need to be there, but if there's any way to just give a little bit of the volume to give us some space on the south side, I think that would just be what we have to accommodate with. Um, but I think that's what I would want to fight for in a redesign. Okay, we can look into that. Okay, my comments next. I'm gonna put in my two cents worth. I think we've been through four councils during the process. Everyone's got their own different ideas. Um, Rodney asked a very good question, why it takes so long to finish one of these projects? Well, this is a little case in point, because everybody has new two cents to go in. We're at the 60% plan. That thing's in there because it's part of the engineering. You've got to have retention ponds anytime you do any uh, impervious construction. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think we got more green space and more of a park than we ever had in the 30% plan, because I've, I've been here for, through two parts of the plan. We got the big sidewalks on both sides. It's, it's gonna have lots of grass. It's gonna have narrow roads with a wide median in the middle, things that weren't on the very first plan. And, and, and a couple of y'all are due, but you know we, we could extend this thing for another three years if we keep trying to redesign the redesign because we're on the third or fourth redesign right now. It's all yeah. I'm saying. And you're coming in late to the game too. And, and it's a valid point, it's a valid concern. Everybody's got their ideas. Johnny and his pond and, and that kind of stuff. But we're at the point now at the 60% plan, if we want to build this thing and buy these properties and get this thing done, because we have all these other issues that we, we got to deal with, I see a pretty good plan compared to what we had in the past. Okay. It's pretty close to what we all wanted in the workshop. The highlighted, JP highlighted, we reduced the roads, we made the median bigger, we put, we got rid of the bike paths on the road. They've done everything that we asked them to do in the last redesign, mm -hmm. which was a big change. It was a big change from the 30% the plan. So, uh, you know, it's good to make these points and I'm sure their firm will do the very best they can, but at some point we've got to say this is good enough, let's go ahead and get this thing built. Okay, yeah, fair enough. I think the president I just want to have going forward then is that we pay for creativity as well as the practical F dot standards. This is the footprint, and I think it's like anything else. Once you once you have it, which is what we want, get it get it there. Things change over time. You know, you can you can bring in plants, you can bring in trees, you can do. I mean, 
Does that make sense? Am I going the right direction? Oh, yeah, no, I, I love the plan as far as the roadway and everything. I just, in my head, and it's not worth taking it all back. I'm but, just, that's, but that's the vision. I'm just adding the word of the caution. It's like, I mean, it's valid comments. Everybody's ideas are, are valid. I'm not trying to dis discourage that. But we are at the point where we've worked really, really hard to get to this point. And if you start changing a whole bunch of stuff, we're going to go backwards. backwards. And we got funding issues that we got to be concerned about. Our staff and Crystal needs to be focused on how do we move forward? When do we need that extra million dollars? If we need that million dollars, Rodney wants this damn thing to be built in 90 days. So if we, <laughs> if we make any other changes, it's going to create more delays. And this firm, along with all the contractors and stuff like that, what kind of message do you send them when you keep changing everything that they've already been working on for months and months and months to, to produce according to engineering and according to Florida statute and according to county regulations? You know, there's a lot of moving parts that we don't see up here, you know, when we give the stamp of approval or during the workshop process when we redesign this whole thing. A lot of the innovations you see on this sign had to do with Mr. Destin changed a, a big part portion of this footprint and so did Johnny and, and and Kevin so you know I just want to say it's we really need to grab this ball and run with it and be focused now on how do we finish this thing as is and if we need to put some lipstick on it after the fact with trees or different shrubbery or different uh, layouts we can do that after the fact it'll just cost a little bit more money so anyways up next is uh, Mr. Bagby and then Mr. Smith and then we'll go ahead and uh, entertain them we should have put a, already done a motion, had discussion, but we'll we'll kind of do it in reverse. So go ahead, Mr. Bagby, and then Mr. Thank Smith. you, Mr. Mayor. Are uh, one and two connected? The pond anyway? Yeah. No. no okay. Sir. So you have four retention facilities on this plan. Uh, I would a couple of suggestions, uh, and I'd like to, and I can talk to your stormwater guy, but uh, you could lower because right now you're going to excavate i think you're about 20 and a half feet uh, elevation and you're going to take it down to about 10 feet in the bottom uh is is there a reason you stopped at 10 feet i don't know the specifics of the drainage design but i would i would advise it's based on the storage um, only excavating as far down as you would need to to hold that volume of water well, but events. see, this, that, that's the whole point everybody's making. If you went down to nine feet or eight feet, guess what? That far western end, it now becomes flat. Because I noticed you have landscaping. When I was looking at the landscaping plan laid over the drainage plan, you've got landscaping on the slope. Okay, you got trees, not, not bushes. You got trees and stuff, mm -hmm. canopy trees on the slope so I'm not sure exactly so I, w I would just ask the landscape people can the eastern end of pond two go lower and if it can then you move the western end of pond two to make it level so that you have the other thing just as a, a guy who's worked with some plants you need to show the whole area the, the problem I have with the presentation that you did tonight is good, but it doesn't show the far western end because I do not believe we own the townhomes uh, on Anna, okay? So if we don't own the townhomes on Anna, that, that big open space on the north side that you kind of alluded to is not near as big as you think it is because that line on the north, that boundary line, that stops and then it drops down to avoid those townhomes over there and actually avoid uh there's two sets i believe over there <clears throat> to get you to azalea so uh those would be the two things i would ask you to look at maybe you can make uh you know i don't know if you can make it wider taller on pond number two you might be able to make it deeper Every foot you go deeper is feet on the west end that you're not filling in. If you could get it at the 13 or 14 foot line, probably the 13 foot line, I think that's the, uh, yeah, that's one. But just ask the stormwater engineer to, if, if that is feasible or possible, that's all I'm asking. Absolutely. And then um, 
yeah, I think those were my main points. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll check on that. It is likely a groundwater elevation factor being a dry retention pond. Once you hit yeah, that groundwater so elevation, I was focused on that. then the more you dig won't do any good because you're not adding volume. Yeah, this is, um, this so that's something we'll look into right and now. if we can make improvements, we will. Well, the groundwater's going to change too. So, I mean, it, you know, I don't know what the average groundwater there is. It may be 9 feet, it may be 12 feet. So then we'll have water. If we have water in there, you don't have fencing that I saw. Correct. If you do get it to a point to where uh, half the year the average groundwater is above the 10-foot level, then you're going to have to put some fencing or something around there to keep little kids from going in where the, the snakes and the alligators and the whatever is going to live in that. Because then it will be a pond for six months out of the year. That's what happened to us. It's over there, right? The city hall? Yeah, we had to put the uh, – I always get – used on directions. That's why we had to add the fence over there because it just kept water all the time. Thank you. Um, lastly, Mr. Schmidt and then our city manager, yeah. and we'll go ahead and make a motion. I'd like to move that the city oh, council address the city manager to continue the design of the Destin Crosstown connector as presented and to proceed with property acquisitions as best as possible. Second. A motion is second, and I did want to give our uh, city manager an opportunity to speak, and then it looks like Mr. Dest, and then we'll go ahead and take it to a vote. That suits everyone. City manager. I just wanted to change hats for just a second, and, and it sounds like y'all are going down this road, no pun intended, but um, the re a lot of recreation areas um, serve dual purpose. so. Having a recreation area that doubles as a retention area when high water comes is not that unusual in parks because I've been around a lot of them. So, if, I mean, if we could make the tweaks that you were suggesting, that might solve that problem. The other thing is I appreciate you making the motion because I think, I think the acquisitions that need to be made are not really involved in the rest of this conversation. They're all to the west of where <coughs> we're talking about right now. And that, if we could get moving on that, that would help us a great deal. And that's what the motion will take place. Mr. Destin, you're the last guy. I, uh, I support the motion going forward. However, after 11 or 12 years at this, for us to be in a rush the last two weeks doesn't make a lot of rational sense. So I would add a, a caveat, and I'll do it in the form of substitute motion, that, that we ask you to bring back a more detailed architectural rendering, engineering rendering, whatever you want to call it so that we can really see it the effect of the pond on that old campground that we foresaw, foresee as being a park area and that you also bring back some traffic calming recommendations for us during down the whole length so that we can go forward with ways to keep that from turning into a speedway and uh um, That's a long, if, long amendment to that motion. Well, it, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a short substitute. We ask for okay. the drawing, and we ask for you to provide traffic calming features for the entire quarter. And if the uh, maker will accept that, then I'll be supportive of it. I'll say. There we go. Okay. Right, there we go. Dewey, can you put a time on that? Can we bring it back to the 90% plan? Uh, you can bring back that architectural rendering for us in what time frame you think should be pretty simple We've got it all there. It's just it's not clearly showing the boundaries and the percentages of the Just to clarify plan. architectural as in like an artistic rendering or would you just like to see the complete set of the landscape drawings? Okay, so those those are complete um, we can have you know, those provided to you right that right shows the outline of the the old campground property and exactly how much the pond takes up and is and i noticed that this is in the presentation this was under the heading of changes from the last 30 percent which means that pond wasn't there before i suppose if it's a change what does that mean it's there because we asked for it no no i understand but it, it, in the presentation it says this is one of the changes from the last plan and and we can 
I know that there's alternatives to put drainage in other places. That's why I would like to see the overall look of the parcel, because if, if we have some quite a bit of property up on the northern side, that might behoove us that that would be the place to put it. So, so you know, I think after listening to all of us, the jury's still really out on what we need to do with that pond to facilitate the recreational use of that parcel. And, and so hopefully you will show that to us so we can understand exactly. But page 135 in your packet does show the whole plan. Yeah. I mean, no, you can see the whole, the whole you can plan. see the whole I'll campground a, a clear parcel. Outlining, out, clear outlining of the old parcel, of the Dustin campground parcel, which is where 80% of the park will be, recreational area, whatever we want to call it. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for us to provide recreational facilities and there's no reason for us to rush a couple of weeks and pre and preempt our ability to do that the drawings are there mr destin would you prefer i would prefer an architectural rendering to get a three-dimensional vision that because, would be perfect because rodney did point out the drawings are already there just everyone's struggling with what those drawings will look like three-dimensionally because we're be not fine. Yep. architects yep. so okay. th that's a note i guess is that that's part of the motion and the, the, the uh, all i want to do is see that so i can get a, a clear idea of how our recreational area is so look. and i'm going to allow uh, mr smith and mr king to make a comment against my better wishes yes. <laughs> i know i know well no it doesn't have to be if, if you all agree to make that part of it then it's still your original motion <clears throat> you want to do that no i just i have some comments and questions on that idea because that the design uh, personally i don't feel like we're rushing it you know because I, I asked the same question and staff has assured us that the pond that's here is you know i think mr bagby's asking some valid questions but it sounds like engineers this is the uh, the option uh, i think that's the answer I just got when it's, I asked it's not, it twice. It's not the only option. It's not the only option. So, but then that's frustrating, though, because they said this is the only way to do it. Okay. So why is this not the only way to do it? I, I, I'm not sure I heard that. This is the only way to do it? <laughs> yes, this is the most suitable, most effective, most efficient way to do it based on on siting report, PD&E studies. My only other question there though would go. be with, you asked for speed studies or, or speed um, deterring devices or ideas. Is that, that, that potentially creates, if, if there are ideas, I mean, are, what are we talking about? Would that been, then be, if we like these ideas, now we're redesigning? Or are we just talking about something that doesn't require redesigning? Correct measures. We're, we're between 60 and 90, 60 and 100. There's plenty of room to modify this this retention pond. So it sounds like we can approve 60 in between 60 and 90, make some of those minor. You can you can still modify from 60 to 90. That's almost 50 percent. Sure. I mean, all I'm saying is we need to maximize our recreational sure. opportunity, yeah. and in order to get this rendering, yeah, so that we can understand it, that gives us that ability. You know, we don't want to walk away from getting the maximum yeah. that we can out of this recreational opportunity as we build this road. So Ronnie asked about time. When can we expect to then to see these requests that the motion, amended motion would put to you guys? Uh, that might be a better answer for you. A question for you. I don't want to put you on the spot, but That's if we're right. talking Three more months. That's three more months of a delay that's been going on for eight years. You're going to have but. to reevaluate your retention pond issues completely from an engineering perspective. That takes time, correct? Correct, yes. To do any stormwater modifications, that would be, okay. from the drainage designers, a significant change. Yep. Um, in terms Telling of... People we need to build we're, not, we're not asking that, nor am I asking for that. I'm asking for an architectural rendering or a... And, and from right. that point, we say, yes, this is important, or no, it's not. Okay, Ray, so you want to take a stab at the motion? <laughs> just, so we know what, just so we know what we're voting on, because I don't at Well, I'm still point. curious, based on that, when can we get that stuff to the level, the basic level? <clears throat> 
I don't have an exact time frame on the rendering. Um, obviously, that's not three months. It may be a few weeks. Um, but I, without giving you a firm answer, I'd have to go back and, and check with staff on that. Uh, I, I'm not going to amend my motion. So I'm leaving my motion as is. There we go. I will make a substitute that incorporates those features because a couple of weeks on a project we've been working on in 11 years to maximize a recreational opportunity is not a uh, is not a step that we should not take. Second. Okay. okay. Well, that's not that's not really where we're at. We need the some components of the first motion, which gives them the ability to start acquiring properties, and and then what you're adding on there is for the rendering so we probably need a little better motion than that or we can just do two different motions we can do one that focuses on that road and then i'm just fishing here do you that well i understand that but i'm asking for clarity because ray's got to read it back to us before we vote ray Uh, are you ready, you Ray? Ahead. Okay, let me read everything uh, from the very first motion to the amendments. Uh, the, the initial motion was for the direct the city manager to continue the design of the Destin Cross Town Connector as presented and to uh, proceed with uh, property acquisition uh, as soon as possible. And then Mr. Destin uh, added that uh, to bring back uh, detailed architecture rendering uh, showing three-dimensional feature that was the mayor said earlier. Is that what you want, sir? And then uh, recommend some traffic calming features uh, throughout the entire quarter. I would point out that the motion, it's on motion does not tell the city manager not to go forward. Yeah. It just asks for more information. Okay, so the first part still valid of the motion exactly. with the two. Okay, so y'all understand what we're voting on then? Yep. Okay, we're good. I, I'm sorry. So I can make I can, I can amend my motion to continue going forward. You're okay. That, that can stay. We're just adding the language that about to still bring us. You're okay with the, what the motion I said? Sure. And the request for the rendering. Yeah. I didn't understand you when you said it in that in that okay. term. So I'm fine with amending my motion. To okay. continue the design. Is the second okay with the amendment to the motion? As long as they add it to the motion, I'm good. Okay. All right. Mr. Bagby, do you really want to ask something? Uh, <laughs> Are we ready to vote? Uh, All right, guys. Well, okay, wait a second. I'm doing Look, a poor I job. Listen, tonight. normally I, I gotta keep this I've got, to two. I got wax. people blowing up. I got a couple people blowing up my phone asking questions about about this. In this drawing, do you want to come look? You don't have it in front of you, I assume. Um, this dotted line that goes around the perimeter right here, some of, it goes around some of the properties that we are not acquiring. Right, what, that dotted line is the drainage basin. Maybe go back. back. That's, Sorry. The, that's the drainage point. That is the drainage basin, so that is just uh, showing what we, the water we are accounting for based on the topographic survey. Got it. Thank you. Thanks, Johnny. All right. Let's vote. Eyes have it. So moved. Next. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Item 4E is a resolution for state oversight of condo maintenance as requested by council. Staff has brought this back. We're looking for your guidance and approval. doing fine on time folks as long as the item seven doesn't wear us out or yeah no number six go ahead go ahead i move to approve resolution 2203 and direct the city clerk to forward copies of the resolution to governor DeSantis, the state legislature including representatives maney and senator gainer and casey cook at the florida league of city second i'll second Got a motion, get a second, Mr. Dustin. Um, I'm gonna support the motion because it's a step, not the step I would have taken, but it's a step. But I would uh, advise all of you who have not read the news story on the maintenance and, yeah. and, and the questions that are going on at one of our oldest condos. Yes. That is exactly 
why we need to do something one way or the other. They are having quite a, a uh, controversy over whether they should fix their condo or not. All right, I got a motion. Got a second. Let's vote. Eyes have it so moved. I have a couple quick announcements, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, sir. Uh, City's craft show will be held on Friday, February 11th at the Dustin Community Center from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And it will again be open on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, city facilities will be closed on Monday, February 21st in honor of President's Day, which will move um, our next council meeting and state of the city to Tuesday, February the 22nd in this room. Um, just so you all are aware, the uh, PD&E for um, the Highway 98 between Airport Road and Calhoun Avenue is underway, and we have posted a flyer that was provided to us by FDOT on our website. If you would like to see the timeline and the mission objectives of that project, um, it's worth looking at because they should be coming to us, asking us for ideas on how to improve intersections along that way, especially Stallman Avenue. So it would be good if y'all could take a look at that. And I believe that's all I have, sir. Appreciate it very much. Um, we have five public <clears throat> item number five. We have three public hearings tonight. Four. So, yes, good idea. It's eight o'clock. Yeah. Well, so much for my New Year's resolution. Let's take a five-minute break.
All righty then. We're on item number five. We're entering into our public hearings. Um, on each hearing, uh, we do have a, uh, a comment period, so we'll uh, uh, we'll uh, expedite that as much as possible. Uh, Ke or, uh, Mr. Bowman, uh, 5A, take it away. Thanks, Mayor. We have the first reading of ordinance number 2201CN, an ordinance of the city of Destin, Florida, relating to construction of docking facilities, establishing a temporary moratorium on construction of new docking facilities that were not approved as of the time of enactment of such temporary moratorium, exempting existing and previously approved docking facilities, providing for findings of fact, directing staff to develop recommendations for regulation of new docking facilities, providing for several ability, providing for expiration of moratorium, and providing for an effective date. And this is a public hearing. And seeing how it's public hearing, I'm going to open up the public comment portion of this hearing on this first ordinance of 22-01-CN. Does anyone here in the audience have any comments? Come on up there. <laughs> Please, sir, state your name and your last known address. Sh <laughs> Sh Sheriff, take notes. Claude Perry, 732 Harbor Boulevard, Destin, Florida. Uh, it, 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 this says construction of a docking facility, and you said new docking facilities. So just a clarification, we are constantly having to change uh, to adapt to what tenant it may be coming or going. So I assume that uh, we'll be able to make adjustments in the current uh, uh, docks. Is that, is that fair to say? Or interpretation from y'all is what I'm, uh, clarification. Can, can somebody answer? If, uh, if council would like that question answered, I'm gonna defer to Ms. Kopp as the yeah. ordinance drafter. Yeah, it, um, depending on the extent of the modification to the existing dock, it could be done. I mean, you can't, you wouldn't be able to start over with a new dock, but if it's something, you know, that's less than 50% or so of, of an existing dock, you should be fine. Plus, it's also temporary. It only goes until May. All right. Thank you, Claude. All right. I will entertain a motion. Oh, does anyone else want to make comment on this first reading of this ordinance? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close that portion and open up um, a motion. Move to approve ordinance 2201C on first reading. Second. Got, got a second. Any further comments? Uh, Ray, can you clean up my, I'm still on my uh, comment period machine here. Thank you, sir. Okay, go ahead. Thanks, sir. Um, the only comment I got is uh, under section 4A, uh, where it says temporary moratorium is on any new dock uh, pretty much throughout the city of Destin. So anybody back in uh, Indian Trail, anywhere in the city, city limits, cannot build a dock. Um, so we, um, I think we were directed to model it after our livery vessel moratorium. So we did it the same way the harbor study covers the bayous as well as the harbor. And so it is written that way, but it's subject to you guys modifying it if you want to. Of course, single family residences are exempted also. So those wouldn't be affected. So single family resident in the harbor? Docks, docks at any single family residence are exempt. Anywhere in the city? Anywhere in the city, yeah. Exempt. Okay, thank you. So this is basically just com any commercial dock. Correct, or multifamily. Thank you. Ms. Haber. So I don't understand why we're doing this for three or four months. It's kind of, I, I don't get it. I mean, it, is there some sort of, did I miss why this got put on there? Was that the meeting I missed that somebody said, hey, we should stop letting those commercial businesses build docks? Until yeah, this May? was directed by the city council. So uh, maybe the motion maker would want to respond to why he made the motion. I'd be happy to. Um, I think it was at the, dis at the meeting for the livery vessel moratorium, and there was a lot of discussion about our harbor. No, I'm sorry, it was about at the uh, marina development. 
and there was discussion about the harbor and our waterways and uh, the importance of the harbor review study, study capacity, capacity study. And uh, since that was so important and we think it is important that we felt, I felt, like obviously other members at the time felt that we should uh, make sure we don't build massive docks until we have a study done. And if that's May, maybe it will be okay. If the study's not done, we might extend this longer after May maybe, if it even gets voted on tonight. So that was the reason why I asked and, and everybody approved it that night, but hope that answers your question. There you go. Any other comments? Go ahead, Mr. Destin. Like Ms. Hebert, I, I think this is a fix looking for a problem to answer. Um, how many commercial dock applications do we have pending now? The <laughs> <laughs> question was how many commercial dock applications do we have pending? Yeah, we got, we got one that's active in two. Two. We got two. And they're in the harbor? In the harbor? In the yeah, both in the harbor, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the issue that, that this got tangled into was the library moratorium. And that issue is not a issue. It was the marine. It, it was, but, Sorry. but I remember the discussion, and that was part of it also. The, uh, that issue is not one of new construction. That's an issue of old docks being used in non-traditional ways where you put four or five other smaller boats in one slip. So this won't address that at all. Um, and I just, I, you know, I just don't see the rationale behind it. Mr. Bagby. This won't affect the two that are already in the pipeline, right? That's, I remember that being discussed at the last, when this was brought up. As it's written, if you have a pending application, you're not exempt. So it would affect them unless you direct us to change ah, it. it if will. you direct us to change it, we certainly will. All right, we have a motion. We have a second. Let's take it to a vote. The motion fails, four to three. So what impacts that on the first reading? The first reading fails. It so, does not go to second. Oh, yeah, it won't, it won't go to second reading. I mean, if somebody wants to make a motion to modify it somehow, that could be done. Or we can or, just be done. Or you can be done with the item, and it's effectively a denial. All right, well, I'll give uh, any opportunity for a, a motion to that effect. If not, we're just going to press on to our next public hearing. No discussion, let's go, sir. Item B. All right, this is the first reading of ordinance number 2204CN, an ordinance of the city of Destin, Florida, providing for the reduction of the speed limit of the entirety of airport road from its intersection with US Highway 98 to its intersection with Main Street, a distance of 8,500 plus or minus feet, providing for the reduction of the speed limit on the entirety of 98 Palms Boulevard from its intersection with Main Street to its termination at a private road servicing a shopping complex, a distance of 1,200 plus or minus feet, providing for the reduction of the speed limit on the entirety of Azalea Drive from its intersection with Stallman Avenue to its intersection with Benning Drive, a distance of 3,700 plus or minus feet, providing for authority, providing for penalties, and providing for an effective date, and this is a public hearing. All right, and what I'll do right now is I'll open up uh, public comment at this time. Does anybody in the audience have any comments uh, uh, for the first reading of Ordinance 22-04-CN? Seeing no public comments, I'm going to close this uh, this portion. And Mr. Brayton, I see that you got your hand up first. Go ahead. My first question is, is why in the world will we reduce the speed on Airport Road to 30 miles an hour? Well, we have, I think the rationale behind this whole thing was safety. Um, and we've approved uh, slow speed vehicles to be able to be on Airport Road who can only do 27 miles an hour. And with that 35 mile speed limit, we just spend a quarter million dollars putting abrasive stuff on that corner because people don't go 35 around that corner, they go 45 sometimes more because um, a lot of people got the nine mile rule. 
I'm not going to say who all those people are, but they go nine miles all over the post of speed limit because they know they're not going to get a reckless driving ticket. They're just going to get a speeding ticket. And so the rationale is, and I think Mr. Dessen was a strong proponent and I backed him up on going to 30 miles an hour in this city, if we care about our people, will get you from point A to point B in a reasonable amount of time on Commons Drive, Zalia, everywhere. In fact, that lady came up, she wishes people would do 30 miles an hour on Calhoun. So that, that's the rationale behind it. And from my perspective, I don't know if any of the other council members might want to weigh in. Mr. Dessen? I would, I would say that is exactly the rationale. We've had two fatalities that I can remember on airport over the last 10 years or however long it was. We just had a very bad uh, pedestrian car interaction on Main Street where the speed limit is 35. Uh, when it's 35, people are going to do 45 and 50. It, it, and this is being action is being taken in the hopes that if you lower it to 30, maybe they'll only go 40. And, and that's the rationale behind it. That's my answer anyway, uh, Mr. Braden and, and Mr. Destin. Um, we, we don't have a motion yet on it, but we are having I'll a discussion. I'll make that motion. And then Mr. Bagby, you, you had your yellow uh -huh. light. You're, okay, we got a motion to second. Mr. Bagby, you want to make a comment before we vote? Everybody good? All right, let's take a vote. Eyes have it, so moved. Notice I was careful of what I said with the sheriff here. <laughs> I appreciate you not calling us I still catch him at the light there. I, uh, my new truck is not silver. Um, <laughs> Kyle? Yes, sir. Your Mayor. turn. Now we have a proposed conditional use 2133 CU quasi judicial hearing for legacy townhomes at 98 Palms. The applicant is requesting consideration of conditional use 2133 CU for a major development order and major subdivision city of Destin project number 2125 SP and 2126 MS. This project includes the subdivision and construction of a plus or minus 66 unit townhome complex along the required site infrastructure to be located at parcel IDs numbers 002S2298 0001A. 2S226401 00040 and 002S220013 000. Thanks, sir. It's a public hearing. And, uh, hang, on, hang on a second. Let oh, me, this is let quasi judicial, so yeah. you guys swear, buddy. Yeah, let me swear everyone in, and then we'll see if there's okay. any ex parte communications, too. Uh, if this, at this time, everyone could please stand and raise their right hand. It plans on testifying. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth? All right, thank you, guys. And at this time, starting with Kevin, uh, if you could please disclose if you've had any ex parte communications on this matter. No, I have not. None. I have not any communications. I have none. I had one citizen call and talk about the topic of too much townhouses being built in Destin, but it will not affect my ability to look at this issue in a fair manner. None. No, sir. Thank you guys. And with that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Kopp. Thanks, Kyle. Um, first, we'd like to enter into the record the entire staff report for this item and all of the exhibits as City's Composite Exhibit A. And Mr. Tatum, any objection to that? All right, there's no objection. Thank you, Ms. Kopp. Okay. And then I'll ask staff to make a presentation followed by allowing the applicant an opportunity to present. Thanks, Kim. Good evening, Mayor and Council. As Kyle stated, uh, tonight we are reviewing a conditional use for a 66 unit townhome development and the related site infrastructure. Uh, the zoning district in which this is located is the town center mixed use zoning district. And as stated, multifamily attached dwellings are a conditional use within this zoning district. Um, as you are aware, this is strictly the conditional use review. Um, the development order in the subdivision would be brought before you uh, once it has been reviewed and a given approval by TRC. The, the conditional use was reviewed based off the future land use element of the comprehensive plan as well as the conditional use criteria that's outlined in the land development code. Uh, as per policy 1-2.4.3 within the city's comprehensive plan, the town center mixed use zoning district shall be a focal point for reinvestment in a community mixed use center anchored by the main street corridor. Uh, therefore, the proposed use of this multifamily attached dwelling is in line with the TCMU zoning district 
future land use intent, as well as the six criteria that is outlined in Article 7 of our Land Development Code that we are that we review by. It is land use compatibility, which encompasses scale and intensity and offsite impacts, sufficient size, site specifications, and infrastructure. <clears throat> uh, proposed use of mitigative techniques, hazardous waste, over proliferation of such use, and compliance with any applicable laws and ordinances. That would be state laws or city ordinances. Um, staff did review this based off the criteria mentioned before. And at the, public, at the public hearing held at the regularly scheduled local planning agency meeting, LPA, on December 2nd, the LPA recommended city council approval for the proposed conditional use 2133CU, subject to the applicant meeting all applicable federal, state, and city requirements. And with that, staff will take any questions, and there are representatives, representatives here from the project. Okay, I've got uh, Ms. Abear has a question to start with, and then we'll um, have, let the uh, applicant uh, do their presentation. Go ahead, Ms. Abear. Um, before this development order is put in place, is there some sort of traffic study that's going to take place? Having 66 units, that's going to be at least 66 cars, and probably double that. And the traffic flow onto 98 from that complex and how it's going to impact our already congested roads. I just wanted to find out if that's something that's going to be looked at before this starts creeping up. So, yeah, and just to clarify, this is the conditional use approval. So subsequent to this, assuming you approve the conditional use tonight, um, then you would have a major development order come back to you. Um, and at that time, much more detail about the actual proposed project would be before you, um, including anything related to traffic. And I believe that the applicant would be required to do a traffic study and will let staff testify to that question. That is correct. We do have um, an ordinance that requires a traffic study be compiled, and we do analyze that based off PM peak hour trips. At all? Okay, so everything that they're doing, basically, this is just approving the conditional use. This is not saying it's going to start being built. This is they've got to now start do all the studies to make sure that this is doable in the city, correct? Correct. Mr. Smith. Thank you. Uh, I have a I question for staff it. and then maybe later for the uh, presenter. Under uh, section one, land use compatibility, offsite impacts. Can you give me a little bit more um, explanation for offsite impacts? What, what, what does that mean? Because when I, I read it, there are no anticipated off-site impacts. It sounds wrong, but maybe in context it's right. So, Yeah, so this is really referring to off-site impacts such as lighting, noise, and pollution. Those are the three main things. So, for example, um, a car, maybe a car repair shop, usually that may give off some noise if they're cranking cars, you know, 20 times a day. Pollution may be some exhaust that's given off. So. You know, there's no additional, there's no offsite impacts besides your normal, av normal everyday commute um, from your family living in this townhome. I mean, there's not going to be any hazardous waste that's generated. There's no, I mean, the only lighting would be your outdoor lighting, and then that's approved based off your outdoor lighting plan. So that would also have to meet city city code. So that's what it, that's what is in, or that's what's meant by offsite impacts. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just interesting. I was reading through it today. You know, it's uh, up for debate, I guess, on what offsite impacts are. And your definition seems probably the correct engineering definition, but I imagine 66 units provides lighting and po noise pollution uh, as an impact and more than it is today. To huh? And a place for people to live. But more than it is today is my only thought. So I just wanted to get clarification that means so that's the only question for staff right now thank you okay mr braden thank you mayor um i got some of the same concerns um on a traffic study or is there a number that comes up when um for a, a one bedroom two bedroom three bedroom home is there a, a vehicle amount associated with that 
So I, I might have to defer to the engineer on this one, but I am aware that when you do a traffic impact analysis, there is an ITE, and that is um, a standard for chips, trips generated by land use. And so when you have a single family dwelling or any kind of multifamily attached dwelling, such as an apartment or a townhome, you have a certain amount of trips that are generated by, uh, <clears throat> I think it's dwelling unit. So if there's 66 in this case, you would plug that into a formula and it's, it's some kind of you know, transportation math, but um, that's how you generate your trips that are generated PM and AM. But as, as I stated earlier, our code specifically calls out that we, our analysis is by PM. Um, so I hope that answers your question, but it's, it's pre pretty much based off of an equation that you plug in a variable with your trips generated by use. Okay, thank you. Um, I know FDOT said that 98 was at a rated an F and that, yeah, for traffic, and the Legion was an F. Um, and then I guess if we said if we put a four lane in, the Crosstown Connector and Legion and Azalea, that would also be an F. So I guess my question is, do, when, when do we worry about traffic and infrastructure, roads, water, sewer, and all that? Or we just continue just to keep building, 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 building. I mean, it, and I fall back to the whole. I mean, I, I know this this, this property is going to be developed, but you know, some way or another. But um, w when do we look at that that kind of stuff, or, or do we? We just worry about that when it gets here. That's my only question. That's unanswerable, right? <laughs> Nobody's stepping up. You ready to try that one? <laughs> Go um, ahead. From an overall development standpoint, <clears throat> uh, that area, if you... Hold on one sec. I don't think you were sworn in. Oh, I'm, I'm just asking a general yeah, question. Yeah, just let us, for the record, because it's okay. a Can you swear him in? Could you please stand and raise your right hand? I know you're, since you're not very trustworthy, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth? I'm just tired of depositions. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay. Um, as you know, um, when we look at our city, uh, we have areas that we've designated for certain um, uh, development intensities. Uh, we have talked about this area here being our town center. And so if you look through the policies that are in the comprehensive plan, they all speak to that. That's probably the area that's got the most highest densities that we have in the city. And associated with that, we have along those um, uh, policies a requirement to provide as much supporting services uh, to that area so that we minimize the amount of travel that people have to make to visit or to go uh, for such things as grocery shopping uh, and the like. And so that's how you kind of balance out uh, that notion of uh, too much driving. Uh, might I remind you that we're only seven square miles and that's all we have. We have to try to manage the density and development that we have the best we can. And part of what we will be discussing as we go through this entire effort of development, we bring in the new code uh, tonight you're going to be looking at the planning areas and so on. We're going to try as much as possible to have that robust discussion where as we grow, which direction we're headed, and so we recalibrate all end use regulations accordingly. Uh, I know it's a circuitous answer, but uh, it's an evolving effort, but uh, it's a challenging situation. We want this area to be our town center, and that requires some level of density, and they're working with the rules that we currently have right now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Brayden. Okay, Mr. Destin. Thank you, Mayor. This is located in a mixed-use area, correct? Is there any definition in the code or the comp plan that what mixed-use means? I mean, if you're 90% residential and 10% commercial, does that meet it? Or is it in, in the other direction? Mixed use is a very fluid term unless there's some definitions. Uh, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what mixed use means. 
as long as you have one percent commercial, you can put the rest residential. What is there anything in that code? I'm getting my planner to look at that right now for you. Yes, we do have a mixed use definition within our comprehensive plan. It states, in land use and transit planning generally refers to different compatible land uses located within a single structure or in proximity to each other. Structure or parcel? I'm sorry. In land use and transit planning generally refers to different compatible land uses located within a single structure or in proximity to each other. But there are no percentages. Not in our definition, no, sir. Well, you know, this is mixed use, so it is a use that's allowed with a condition. And the condition, of course, is that I would like to see is how we're going to address the traffic and other infrastructure needs. Without that condition, then this isn't a conditional use at all. It's just a use. And that word means something, and, and it's something that we need to go forward and try to define and, and require that conditional use has a condition. Let's condition is we address the, the impacts of the on the infrastructure of these uh, projects best I can tell since I've been back on this council we've approved close to 200 units and so far I've not seen anybody address conditional issues and I would like to find some way that we can address them as we go forward I'm not telling these folks they can't build but let's build in a responsible manner Mr. Bagby. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, is there any commercial in this project? No, sir. These are this is strictly 66 townhome units. Okay, I, I just want to make sure, I, and and it meets the conditional use at least according to the staff. Correct. Yes, sir. It does. And, and so I understand that. Uh, I will tell you before it comes back as a development order. Okay, I want you to look at the landscaping and the drainage plan because when you put all those live oaks and all those pine trees in that drainage retention pond or those two drainage retention ponds, it doesn't take but about two seasons for them to fill up and stop serving as retention ponds. So I assume everybody up here is going to focus on the, uh, the traffic and the parking and all that other stuff. I'm going to focus on that. And if there's not some agreement that they will maintain those at the depth constructed and approved in the plan, I will be a hard no. Thank you. Not a medium no. No, no look at this. I mean, this is. So um, one of our responsibilities is mitigating risk and mitigating legal uh, uh, risk. Um, I just want before this is not a development order. It's just a conditional use approval or disapproval and the list was read on the record of what the different conditionals use can be used in our town center mixed use. Um, one thing we can't ever forget is private property rights versus personal opinion. Uh, just because you may personally not like something you have to take account. Um, every aspect of a request of a private property owner, uh, Mr. Bagby just brought up one issue that probably needs to be addressed between the private property owner and, and him personally. Uh, townhomes are two homes together. Uh, there's people, there's an anti-apartment attitude uh, that permeates uh, our community. Um, uh, I always hear people talking about um, affordable living. Well, right now, those apartments are affordable living for a whole bunch of people here. Uh, the mean, median uh, house price in Destin right now is uh, right at $400,000. A lot of people can't afford to buy one of those. Um, I feel blessed that I do. Uh, so t in, in townhomes are not apartments. People are going to buy those, and they're going to live in them. They're just going to have a real close neighbor instead of my neighborhood. Um, so we need to keep that into it. And, and one of the things you got to consider, this council will have a couple options here. Uh, you, you know, one of the things, if you, your opinion, your personal opinion is you don't like apartments or townhomes or high density development and what, what areas we have left in our community, then we need to take a hard look at changing our comp plan. Uh, we're already in the process of redoing our LDC 
and even though our zoning and flume map is matching for the first time in 35 years, we can still change zoning and flume. So um, to suit everybody's personal opinion. Um, otherwise, we only got a couple options here. We can put a moratorium on new residents in Destin. Don't think that's gonna fly very good, but that's kind of what we're talking about attitude wise throughout the community because the people that complain about more more homes or more apartments, they live here. They, they, they got here somehow. Some of them live in apartments that complain about apartments. Um, other one is another one here is we're gonna deny the recommendation of our LPA. And I thought we had a long discussion in the last meeting or two about how important our panels are and, and uh, how we appoint people to these panels and yet they don't feel like we listen to what they say. And they're, they're appointed by our council. And so the, the LPA recommended that this conditional use be approved. They've already reviewed all this stuff. And lastly, your other recommendation is if you can't come up with a good reason why you, to, uh, or you come, you, you don't have a good reason to deny a conditional use and or later on a DO, um, we get sued. So those are all things to keep in mind. And it's easy to say, well, I don't care if they sue us because it's, maybe because it's not your money, but it is our money. So that, I just want to, I'm not proposing that you approve the conditional use. It's just every time we get talking about stuff along this lines of, impacts and, and that, you know, the, the negative aspects of it. Um, I just want us to kind of do it on an even keel because there's positive things to new people living here. There's new tax bases. You might meet somebody you really like that decides to move here into Destin, somebody that may benefit your business. Uh, we have a critical work housing need and uh, townhomes are not gonna be as expensive as a single family home. So I just, I just would like everybody to kind of keep that in their minds as they vote and as they decide. Um, Mr. King and then Mr. Braden. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I share the same sentiment and I've been consistent across the board. Just, just real quick, before we get too far down the discussion road, I, I do wanna make sure that the applicant has his opportunity to present. Uh, so, Mayor, I, I would recommend uh, allowing the applicant to cross-examine staff if he desires and to present at this time. All right, we'll start Mr. King and Mr. Braden because I already got on my soapbox, so I wanna give uh, I want to give our council members time to refute anything I've said, or but we'll let we'll let the representatives uh, do their presentation before we go any further, and it may create a whole new discussion. So, we'll we'll let uh, Steve. Are you ready to to do your presentation? Makes me nervous when they talk to the TVs. I don't like I don't like when attorneys whisper. Prior to the meeting, I had a conversation with Mr. Tatum about the traffic concerns, and he had indicated some agreement with putting a condition on the conditional use that we um, would require those traffic concerns to be addressed prior to issue, you know, in the DO application process. And when that DO application came to you, it would have those conditions um, as appropriate in there. And so I was just asking him now if he also wanted to agree to Council Member Bagby's um, request regarding okay. the drainage stormwater. Okay, all right, well. We'll just start there. We're, we're gonna come back for more discussion, but Mr. Tatum, you have the microphone. All right, good evening, Stephen Tatum from Matthews and Jones. Uh, we'll just start with Mr. Bagby's uh, comment. I don't know that there's an issue with that. Um, I putting it as a condition that we don't have the live oaks or pine trees in the pond. I'm not sure. I'm not familiar enough with engineering. Jamie's here. Maybe he could comment on that. Um, but we would certainly welcome any kind of condition that says, you know, we must abide by whatever standards for stormwater, obviously. And to your point that it must stay cleaned out. Absolutely. I mean, that's required by water management district. Technically how it's enforced. I don't know. But, <laughs> and you know, and there will be conditions in whatever CCRs for the community that, you know, maintenance of the pond's responsibility of the association, all of that will exist. So that kind of helps your concern, but um, I'm sure, you know, by the time we get back to you with DO, your issues could be addressed. And if you'd like Jamie to come up and talk about the pine trees and live oaks. Yeah, I don't have an issue with that. Okay, so I think we're okay there. Um, 
But the staff did a good job covering it. I did want to point out a couple of things. The proposed site plan right now for 66 townhome units is 12 dwelling units an acre, 12.02 to be exact. And the allowed density in TCMU is 24. So we're just a little bit over half of the density that could be going there. And as far as kind of to your, your um, concerns, Mr. Schmidt, the, the off-site impacts, yeah, if you were putting these townhomes right beside an estate-type residential subdivision, yeah, I mean, I could see some potential issues off-site. However, when you're talking about it being beside a shopping center, apartment complex, a hotel, those are all very compatible type uses. And that's why the TCMU mixed use district does not mean that every development has to be a mixed use development. It means that that district is designed so that you have a mixture of uses within it. So that's kind of what the offsite impacts goes to. Now I know you were also talking about traffic and believe me, traffic's a concern for everybody. Um, you asked about a traffic study. Traffic study has already been performed already been submitted actually. I don't know that it's been reviewed because we're waiting on this for the development order to move forward. But it was submitted with the development order. It showed 41 p.m. peak hour trips. Now that's not to say we only produce 41 trips, obviously. You know, 66 units, you're gonna produce more than that. But your p.m. peak hour time frame, which is what is standard across the country that you analyze trips by, shows that there'll be 41 trips um, only I think the biggest concern probably is the intersection of 98 and Palm Drive, <clears throat> um, not being signalized, people trying to turn there. The trip distribution that was produced by Joe Poole, who was our traffic engineer. I just don't know if any of you know Joe, but Joe has been around a very long time and is very well respected on this. Um, it's his belief that most people will travel through the shopping center down by McDonald's use the light. You know, so they're not having to deal with that intersection. Or when they're coming in, vice versa. You will have the you know, one brave soul that wants to turn there, but heck, I turned there at times too, trying to get to the, the gas station or something. So, you know, it happens. But the, the trip generation shows that you will have seven trips entering that will be coming eastbound, so coming from, from the harbor or from the, the bridge back into town. Seven trips that would turn left during that PM peak hour into Palm Drive. And then you would have three that would be trying to turn left out of Palm Drive, headed back towards the east on 98. So a total of 10 trips, trips during that PM peak hour. So 60 minute, 10 trips total that would be having to cross traffic on 98 at some point. Should be doable. Um, I don't know that there were any other concerns. Oh, yeah. Um, the discussion about townhomes, apartments. I, I, most of you, I think all of you, except for maybe Mr. Brayton, were not on council when the changes were made to make apartments conditional uses. I think that happened 18, 19 time frame. The thought when that was brought up, and actually I think it was Parker that brought it up, was that you, we were building so many apartments, we were using up all this land that could be developed for single family homes so that we can encourage home ownership. So apartments became a conditional use so that we could try to regulate them, control them. This mixed use townhome development does provide the ability for individual home ownership. These will be platted individual townhome lots. They will be sold. I mean, they will be the footprint of the building, but it will be sold and owned in fee simple by individuals. So we have provided that opportunity for people to be able to purchase a home. We're providing it at a cost that will be lower than the median single family home on a quarter acre or even a tenth acre, I guess, around here. But it will be lower because the cost of construction will be lower because of the way you're building the houses, the way townhome development works. So you, you're, you're maximizing the land at a benefit to the developer, but also as a benefit to the end user. So I just wanted to point that out, that it is a move in the right direction to create some affordable housing that's desperately needed. Because if we don't do townhomes, if we don't do some sort of, some sort of multifamily development, and you end up with single family lots scattered here and there with the rest of the developable land that we have, prices aren't gonna go down, they're gonna go up. Because a single family lot, to be able to meet the lot requirements and build a decent sized house, you're gonna be looking at taking your inventory down even further as more people move in, or as you have people who work here that are graduating up from housing that's you know apartment into wanting to buy, there's gonna be more and more demand 
less and less product, prices go up, we have no more workforce housing or any less than we've already got. Yes, sir? What is the price point? Do we have a price point yet, Jamie? We don't yet. I do know from my talk to Mr. McDonald that the, the, the point of the town hall project was to build something that was more appeasable to workers as opposed to. What's that number going to be? You know what I mean? Like that's, we've, we've come across this before and it's like, we're going to do affordable housing that's not actually affordable. You know, I mean, our, our, our industry here, our, our the service industry here is, is what's driven the rental market through the roof because all these folks i was well all these folks make plenty of money to buy a house but the irs doesn't know that you know what i mean so i mean what's affordable right uh, jamie eubanks with jenkins engineering 73 eglin parkway Fort on beach florida um to answer your question mr king so it is dependent, right? So just getting through this stage and then getting to the DL, by the time dirt moves, it's a bit of a moving cost. So we don't have a set price. The owner, price, the owner doesn't have a set price. I can tell you right now, monthly, from what I've been told by the ownership team and, and others, is that Olympus, the old vintage Destin, is renting somewhere along the lines of 2300 to 2600 a month. Um, this is intended monthly payment-wise to be less than that. So... Uh, and don't don't misconstrue sorry. what I'm what what I'm no not renting sorry mortgage don't misconstrue what I'm trying to say I support the project I'm number one proponent I will always I will always back home ownership um, the <clears throat> is the developer here by he's chance he's not he's not um, you, I feel like I have deja vu with this has been you know this these are the questions these are the this is the conversation we have when stuff like this comes along. Again, I support what, what's going on. I do have um, a couple of concerns myself. The, you know, in, in, and I don't mean to cut you off, I'm taking, this is my turn, but while you guys are at the mic. Um, the, you know, I was, we're, we've all been tasked with finding a representative for different CRAs, and one of them is the town center CRA. I, I can't, I am having the hardest time finding somebody who lives in, this area to represent me as on the town center CRA. So I like the idea. I think, you know, I've had some thoughts about this myself and I think that home ownership in this area is a great thing. I think it's, it, it puts you right in the center of town. There's so many, so many opportunities for somebody who wants to get in, who wants to get in on home ownership at, you know, uh, a lower, a lower number than the average of $400,000. Um, <clears throat> the, you know, I think my thinking is this property has got one of three or four potential uses. You could, you know, put a hotel there, condo, um, city could acquire it for green space, or we could put new homes on it. I think the only two options are if we're going to, if we're going to go back and forth and this doesn't concern you guys, but if we're going to go back and forth on how many people are going to live here or how many people we're going to allow to live here if 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 we're going to try to make that decision i think we need to put our money where our mouth is and just go go off and buy all these properties we don't want people living you know and let's make more green space but yeah and i, I can't do that because i make a living selling these things so uh if we put a moratorium on new people then i got to go somewhere else and we have to find a new council member um uh, have we have has this developer done a project similar to this where can we go to see it um i mean we want it to be nice we want it to be attractive something we look at now i also know that as time goes on in the development process if the cost of goods and supplies go up so does the price point of the house um you know i would say for that area of town you know look at 98 right there i don't know what our and I may be talking out of my ears here, but what what is our uh, what's our requirement as far as roads in a place like this? If you look at 98 right there, right there, it's littered with potholes. Do we require a crushed rock base? I mean, what are we what do we require as far as road goes? I would hate to skimp on on that and have a have an eyesore or a bumpy 
pothole road going through there. And I think that's all I have. Thanks. What's the answer to that question as far as the roads go there? Uh, for road base? Joe, if, if Lewis is going to have to get sworn in, you're definitely going to have to get sworn in. <laughs> Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth? Yes. All right. Thanks, Joe. Uh, for road base, there's several different types of road base that can be used. Uh, crushed asphalt, uh, sorry, not crushed asphalt. Uh, crushed concrete is a good road base material. Uh, dolomite is pretty much a, uh, an industry standard. And in areas that are not in our white sand zone, red clay can be used. That would be, cons is that, is that, does this fall in the white sand zone? He's looking, Councilman, uh, either way, uh, if, if you need that as a condition, I can assure you our plans, we do not call for clay in our roadways. Um, you know, there are some rare circumstances that it might make sense, but um, no, this is not that circumstance. Okay, and, and, and before we go any further comments, I, I am gonna open this up for public comment. Uh, prior to uh, making any motions. Um, I still got Mr. Braden uh, up. Uh, are, are you done? Yep. Okay, Mr. Braden, you still have questions for the presenter? Yeah, thanks. Um, it's some of both. Um, I know we put that conditional use that was referenced a little while ago for the council, I guess for the council staff to say so, for what was going on. So I guess I'm confused if the staff says they've, they've met the conditional use that if we deny it, we're going to get sued. If right. that's the case, then why why do we even have that conditional use clause? In no, there? I, I I think we're telling you you can put conditions on this use. That's what we're saying. I'm like I said a few minutes ago, um, and the applicant has agreed to it. But whether they did or not, you could put it, a condition on having traffic addressed and on the stormwater and other issues that you think are reasonable under the evidence presented tonight to put on this use. So if we know that um, these people that more than likely is going to tear up Winn-Dixie's parking lot trying to get to the red light at Gulf Shore Drive to get out, then the conditional use would be the developer needs to put a red light at 98 and Palms. Mm. So at this stage, we're talking about the use, not the specific plans. That's why we're saying when the DO comes is when we would discuss the specifics. We would put a more broad, well, this is a suggestion. If you're putting a condition on it, I would suggest making it more broad right now so that when staff has reviewed all of this information at the DO stage, which is when they look at that kind of detail, then you can put on and know what the appropriate detailed conditions are. But at this stage, without having reviewed all of that information, all of those plans, which are currently in TRC and mid mid review, how can they give you those suggestions for that kind of detail yet? That's that's staff's perspective. So if somebody come up and said we want to put uh, 66 pawn shops there, we could put a conditional use that says no, you can only have two. Now, there's a criteria for over proliferation of uses in the conditional use criteria so yes you could okay um and another that i mean i just really chaps my hind in is when people say they're building low-income housing because they didn't say that yeah, well i mean it was it's been referred to tonight here a couple times that affordable housing Affordable housing. That's well, in the eye of the beholder, though. Affordable. If you look, look up, look up you affordable housing, <laughs> and affordable housing will tell you it's based off um, minimum wage or below. And at ten dollars an hour, forty hours a week, that's four hundred dollars. That's sixteen hundred dollars a month. Somebody can't put spend sixteen hundred dollars a month, and that's what for just nothing but for rent. So this is not affordable housing. And it also refers to affordable housing being for homeless people, transient housing, 
Look it up, Jim. It's on. Well, it's, then I just used the wrong words. I just picked I the wrong word. I just don't. It want is somebody. housing that could be afforded by workers so in the area. Yeah, yeah. Right. someone like that. Well, but I mean, you know, maybe a family that makes that cumulatively. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, but let's let's be honest. This is not a cheap place to live, regardless. No, it's you not. Know, and we, it's like we said before, they somebody they're building affordable housing. Well, twenty hundred dollars a month for a little three bedroom apartment is not affordable housing. I mean, maybe in New York, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I mean, your, your point's well taken. I understand. And maybe if that, that's the definition of affordable, then, yeah, then that's not the correct word to be using. But, but the point is, it's not going to cost as much as a single family home. Right. That's, that's kind of the point. So it does open up another avenue for home ownership that is needed, we believe. I think most everybody believes we need more homes that people can purchase at a somewhat reasonable price. Okay, thank you. Yes, That's sir. all, Mayor. Okay. Um, oh, and I did want to point out, and, and you kind of opened this door, Mr. Braden, um, the, you know, what could be built on that property. You know, traffic's a concern, obviously, and I think you, you did too, Mr. King, but the, you know, it's mixed use. We could put more retail there. Uh, 20,000 square foot retail shopping center on that lot, which would be completely doable. Or you could even do it as a mixed use with 20,000 square feet on the bottom and some residential on top. But 20,000 square feet by itself would produce 161 p.m. peak hour trips. Oh, I'm sorry, 166. Yeah. So, and that's a use that is not a conditional use. So, you know, would not be something that Correct. we're before you on. So, I just want y'all to, to keep that in mind that, I mean, it's not a threat because I don't think anybody wants to do that. But it is something that, I mean, this is, this is a good option, especially at 12 units per acre instead of going, trying to maximize it. Yeah, real quick, and I know I'm not talking out of turn, but to your point, Rodney, I think, you know, ask the people who work in New York City where they live. It ain't New York City. And and I don't mean to sound I don't mean to sound ugly here, but I consider it I consider it a great privilege to live in this town and I work my hind end off to be able to afford to do so. I'm not saying that I'm not saying we shouldn't have some places, but I think to the mayor's point with, there are a lot of apartments here right now, and I, it, that would be considered they're affordable all, compared all to full. everywhere else. And I get that. And and but if you want if you want to live here, you want to work here and do fun here. I don't know. I'm getting I'm getting hyped up. Yeah. Let's uh, we let, we, we got a uh, let me make one more one more statement. We get, before I when we down. finish with you before we go through our other speakers to weigh in. I'm going to open it for public comment. Then we'll make a motion, and everybody that's queued up here can make comments at that time. And that way we can let uh, Stephen um, finish his deal. And then um, after we do that, if we need to call him up to answer specific questions, we will do that again, okay? Because I know this is important to everyone. Uh, I just want to remind us, all we're doing is making an approval or disapproval on a conditional use. This is not the DO. This is not the project itself. It's whether we want a commercial building, you know, he's not, you know, he said what could be built there. What they're wanting is a townhome, which is a conditional use under our comp plan. They, they could come with some other conditional, there's six of them, right? There's six conditional uses within that zone. So anyways, I just kind of want to bring that back to fruition. We'll let you finish, Stephen. Then I'm going to open up for public comment. We'll entertain a motion and we'll start the discussion process if anybody wants to. And if they have a specific question for those guys during that process, we'll, we'll call them back up to the podium. But just to expedite it, we'll let, let him finish this part. Only other thing I wanted to mention was if, you know, concerns about driving through the Winn-Dixie parking lot on those roads through there. Um, the developer of this property, Mark McDonald, he was one of the original 98 Palms Limited that developed all that entire shopping center. They held onto this piece of property for the reason of, we don't know what we're gonna do with it yet, let's see what fits best in the future. And they did, they were wise enough to reserve an easement to themselves through that area. So, you know, it's not like they would just be trespassing and utilizing it, they would actually have a right to. <laughs> really. That's all I got. All right, thank you. Uh, what I'm gonna do right now then is, is anybody in the audience uh, want to make any comments uh, on this particular uh, quasi-judicial hearing. Come on up. You have three minutes. Uh, just state your name and your address, and we'll go from there.
Hi, good evening, Jeannie Hopkins, Indian Trail. Um, my only question about the townhomes are, will they truly be uh, permanent residents for folks or are they going to be allowed to be used as short-term rental properties? Kim? So in, actually, <clears throat> and staff can correct me if I'm wrong, in order to be short-term rentals, that is something that this applicant would have had to pursue as part of a conditional use. They chose not to because that, again, it's not their intention. They're actually platting these out to be sold. Um, but that would have been something that I believe we would have had to have requested, um, and they are not pursuing that option. That is correct. Which My means they can't be then, right? To answer her question, so, just, just a little more clarity. Until, Wait, too, so they I guess can't be, right? When the DO is written, it would address if short term rentals were allowed or not. As of right now, they are not allowed. If As something changed before gotcha. the DO, but, but again, the DO is going sure. to come to you. So if that yeah. changed, you would know. As of okay. now, not that. Thank right. you. And they would have to apply for another conditional use since short term rentals in this zone are a conditional use. And there are no plans to put that in the DO? No, no sir. Okay, so going forward, they would probably have something that states no uh, short-term leases or leases under six months, correct? Okay, that's all I had. Thank oh, you. All right, thank you very much. Anyone else? Come on up. Todd Burr, uh, 4510 Luke, and she stole most of my thunder, uh, which was about short-term rentals, and that is a conditional use. If you look into the town center mixed-use zoning plat, be as it's already been stated a couple of times, the conditional use, the council can put any condition they want on it or state. As I think most of everyone in the room knows, the truth has a date time stamp and things tend to change and the truth changes over time. I personally know in my time here, townhomes that are now short term rentals that no one envisioned that way. I would, as a public voice, encourage the council if your intent is this to be in line with our priorities of number one residents, number two businesses, and number three visitors, state it clearly and put it in the resolution now on the conditional use approval that a condition of having these is these are residential and they will not be short term rentals and let that intent flow down through the DO process and all the other committees know very specifically what the council's intent is on what these should be today and that can exist in all the record requests that go done of what was done. It may, might be harder to undo. Just a thought. Thank you, sir. All right, is there anyone else? Seeing none, I'm gonna go ahead and close the uh, public comment period and I will entertain a motion at this time and then we'll go back to our debate and we're only gonna go through one time and then we're gonna vote. But everybody can have a shot at it. So if you got any notes or any questions or any comments before we go to a vote, Go ahead and write them down, prepare them, and cue yourself up. I've already got three people up now. So I'll entertain a motion at this time. Mr. Mayor, I move that the City Council approve proposed conditional use 21-33-CU, which approval will be subject to additional applications for a major development order, major subdivision, and all applicable city and state permits. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All right. Uh, Next is Mr. Wagner and then Mr. Schmidt. All right. Um, so my only concern, and it's really not against them, I'm for pro-growth as well and responsible growth. I think the main thing would be, um, as of right now, it's really about your neighbors or who you guys given the, um, the target lot and all these other lots. Those drainage ditches are just disgusting. The uh, road isn't owned by the city and we have no control other than to send them letters and they don't seem to be too responsive. So my, my only thing asking moving forward as options, I don't know if it's a direction or not, would be what can we do to beautify around this development? I know the McDonald's side of that um, intersection is beautiful, but the other side is a barren wasteland. Um, there's just dead trees everywhere. There's dead bushes on the side of the road. So I think this would be a great opportunity if we're going to put new development in there to allow it to be more of a visual representation of what we're trying to do and allow it be a good thing. Let it be a good thing. Um, so if we're going to go forward with it, us also think about the neighborings and the surrounding neighbors of how we can contribute to make this what we want it to be instead of just demanding it all from 
every other developer coming in here. I think it needs to be a community thing, and I don't know who the players are, but I think that should be a workshop that we get down and sit down and get all the parcel players together to figure out how we're going to really make this a connectivity, whatever uh, Main Street becomes and whatever the uh, other side of the road with the, um, the pottery barn area is. Uh, that's going to be a main channel for them to walk. And I work out at the 24-7, so I see the trash there. I see there's no lines there. I'm glad we brought it down to 30 miles an hour tonight, but I think we also need to figure out what that looks like walking there. Um, there's a lot of mix-match things there, so that's just my public comment moving forward on how we should also help them develop is getting, a, getting all the surrounding parcels up to the beautification that we all want. Um, Mr. Schmidt, you're up. Thank you, and uh, bear with me since this is my last time I get to speak. Um, <laughs> on this side. I, yeah, I'm aware. So, I, yeah, I know it is. He doesn't really mean it, but he kind of does. Um, the conditions that were discussed, sidebar, and, and Mr. Bagby mentioned something about that condition. He made a motion, but no conditions were mentioned in the motion. So, how does that come into play? As of now, the motion has no conditions. If you want conditions, they're going to have to be so made So everything apart. that Mr. Bagby said <clears throat> and that you said on the sidebar with Mr. Steve aren't conditions right now. All right now, unless you amend the motion. Okay. Okay. I'm glad to know that. And then, Mr. Bagby, can you reiterate what your intentions were and, and what you were asking them to do earlier? Because I've just a lot's been said since then. I, I have a follow-up to that or additions. So I just want to hear you first. Sure, yeah. Uh, my, I'm still reserving my right to speak Yeah, no, no, I understand, know. I understand. I wouldn't. <laughs> the, Can uh, we put a moratorium well, on Mr. Smith after no. this one? <laughs> <laughs> this okay. is a conditional use hearing in my mind. It, it's a, you either approve it or you don't. To, what I tried to transmit was when the development order, and I, I might disagree slightly with uh, my good friend, Mr. Buer, but uh, I I tend to want to see things in the development order because nobody goes back and looks at when you got a conditional use uh, approval for your your plant. They look at the development order. If it's not called out that there's a hard maintenance requirement for that drainage area, for that stormwater area, whatever, if there's not a hard requirement in that development order that uh, they will maintain something or, or whatever because there were a couple of other different things that that's where I have always uh, looked at putting it not in the conditional use approval so that was my intent but if you want to add conditions in here I'm I'm okay with those uh, I just don't think people come back and read this not, I agree with you what we're saying is if you put if you want a condition in the development order to let us know now and we will put it in the development order that comes back to you. Thank you. Um, I had a question on the design if you don't if you don't mind. Ellie Avenue uh, comes off of 98 Palms Boulevard. Is that a new road or is that the road that goes in front of the wing shop and, and, and Win Dixie that you were just mentioning a minute ago? No, so the, those are our new roads, Councilman. So that is part of the, the design for this project. So and I'm not sure how familiar you are with the, the, the aerial of that, but there's this little two lane looking, look at this, my thing just reset. It goes right into the side of the wing company. Correct. Is that, Correct. you know what I'm talking about? Is that, is, that, is that one of the new roads? Is that stay there and there's gonna be another new road? Sure, exactly. That's what I was, the map, but yeah. Councilman, you're, you're speaking to this. Yeah. So that is, that is new. That is reconstructed. So what happens right now for the board, everybody see, I'll try and stay at the mic. Um, oh, sorry, guys. <clears throat> so currently, actually, the Winn-Dixie loading area, actually, you may be familiar, kind of snakes back through here. So as part of this, they've worked with Winn-Dixie to give them better turning movements coming through. So yes, this does have a dual access into this development. Um, however, it's also intended, this is more of a heavy duty so that they can have a smoother transition into Winn-Dixie. Okay. Um, all right. 
So in regards to retention, that's fine. Thank you yep. so much. Um, I was going a little more along the lines of the requirements for the retention fund, where we just had a uh, crosstown connector piece of land that looks bigger than this. I don't know the actual comparison. And we were just told that that dry um, pond has to be that big. But on this design, I'm, I'm not an engineer, but the scale of the one retention pond is tiny. So I assume this is what's required for this development. So is that you uh, answer I mean, that I can question answer that or and staff? Then if, if staff thinks I'm because earlier we had this half a mile corridor that we had to have this massive dry pond. Correct. We told that's the way it has to be. And now we have a 66 town unit complex with this little pond and only one. So, so, so we reviewed multiple non-engineer. Right. Understood. <laughs> Neither am I. No, I can't. Um, so we reviewed multiple options for this. Um, we actually looked at underground storage with um, some storm check chambers and some exfiltration. Um, that was when we were looking at a higher density where some of this area was used uh, more than it is now. Um, one thing that this site is blessed with, and it, I can't speak to the Crosstown Connector obviously, but one thing that this site is blessed with is tremendous soils. I mean, this is quite frankly pure beach sand. Um, the rates that you get here and the rates that we saw at Vintage or Olympus um, you know, are on the order of 100 inches an hour. They're, they're beyond what we can even design for in terms of state permitting, for example. Um, so th there's actually retention on both sides um, as well as in that back corner, which is primarily what you're referencing. And it's actually designed for the 100-year storm. So the city requires a 25-year storm, but these are actually done for a 100-year storm. I appreciate you answering that just because when you visually look at these drawings and what we what spent a lot of time on just tonight, and then you look at this, sometimes it doesn't add up to people that don't understand it completely. Mm -hmm. um, so I appreciate that. Um, so what I would like to do is, is I would like to make a substitute motion um, or request to amend current motion, but um, I want to put the conditional uses specifically that no short-term rentals will be done um, on the property. So you can we amend it, or I'm not sure who made the motion, but. Sure. So I want to amend to include a, the, the, the uh, conditional use, no short-term rentals to be allowed and, and be in the DO application. I'm not sure who made the motion, though. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Jim. All right. <laughs> no, <laughs> there, there is it. I think I'm good for tonight. Thank you, Mayor. The uh, conditional use that I would like to see placed in there is that we address the traffic concerns. I went and drove the area today, and what we need is another intersection on 98. Even though this project does have access through the Winn Dixie and, and the old uh, development there, that access goes out to an intersection that's failing. And 66 units may only, according to the magic calculations done by traffic engineers, generate seven trips per peak hour. But we all know it's more like 132 cars if two people live in East Town House. So the traffic is what has concerned me about this all along. And so I would ask Mr. Bagby to add as a condition that the traffic be addressed. And I also, uh, you know, I had spoken to the land use attorney earlier today and how do we get an intersection like that done? And, and do we ask the people that are building these projects now to contribute? Well, that could be construed as an extraction, which we do not do and should not do. But it would certainly go a long way toward relieving the traffic problems. It's, it's, an, it's a clear line between the congestion we have on the roads and how to fix it. So. You know, we can always bear that in mind if we have a, a developer with a good heart who could voluntarily try to help us with these issues, that would be a good thing and set a good precedent for future developments. So if, if Mr. Bagby will allow us to add this condition that we address the traffic issues, then 
we can go forward from there. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> you good with that, Jim? Yes, sir. Sure Second, good with that? Yeah. You had that, Ray? Good. Okay. All right. Jim, your last guy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Unless Rodney wants we, to do it, or Bobby, yeah, or Teresa, we, they had to take it a turn. Go ahead. You, you answered, uh, I think, one of Mr. King's questions was, has the developer done anything around here, and what has have they done? And so they did the Winn-Dixie, and they did all that shopping center and everything. Uh, I, I guess, <clears throat> and I, I'm going to vote for it, obviously. I made the motion, and I will look forward to seeing the development order. My concern is... Uh, when we started talking about town center 18 years ago, we all had kind of a different vision. And I, this was going to be one side of the town center, and the old Kmart was going to be the other side. And we were going to have these Alice Beach Rosemary looking town centers where we had live, true live work units, not a bunch of live, you know, not 66 live units out here on the outskirts and a bunch of retail. Uh, in the center, and but we didn't get a quint student really. We didn't we didn't get a champion to come in and just buy all that stuff up and say, I'm going to build this. I'm going to redo it just like uh, Mr. Studer did in downtown Pensacola. And I would just ask uh, McDonald Old Acre if they would ever consider doing that, uh, buying that other parcel and creating a true town center. I think. The, the amount of money, and I don't say you do it, do it for money, but you're not in business, or Mr. McDonald's not in business to lose money, uh, but the amount of revenue and a, amount, I mean, if we had a downtown that looked even like Pensacola's downtown, what they've done down there, it would be an amazing thing uh, with the restaurants and shops and, you know, we would have three Dewey's restaurants. So I would just ask uh, that y'all look at redeveloping because those buildings are getting older. The Winn-Dixie, Win some of those buildings are old. Uh, look at the redevelopment of that entire parcel because I assume the retail, the commercial, you still have complete control over. Is that correct? Don't quote me on this. So okay. I'm going to say it on the record. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the Win Dixie Shopping Center was all condominiumized 15 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that would be all right. Not a whole lot of fun. Doable, but yeah. No, because I think y'all would do it right if if you had, you know, you're you're one of those few entities that has enough uh, breadth and experience. And resources to to do it right, and I uh, was just hoping. We'll have a discussion. Okay, thank you, Mr. King. Thank you, sir. Um, on the topic of obviously conditional use, um, these are all. This is all tandem parking. Is that right? It's like in line. Correct. And then there is a garage space as well. Say again. And then there is a garage space as well. Okay. I know we've come across this before, not to throw Mr. Destin under the bus, but we saw something like this before and we were, you know, we had asked for some more parking and, you know, where is the overflow going to go? You know, I'm not trying to put anything more on y'all's plate, um, but I think it's something. Do, do you guys have any? Let's wait till the DO. Okay, okay. So that, that can come when the DO. Okay. All right. And, All right. And last step. I've got one no. more question. Give me just a second. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's, can we, can we get, have they done button. something like this <laughs> in the past that we can look at and see it, something that's, how can we go about seeing what it's going to look like? We're going to have plenty of opportunity to weigh in on the DO discussion on all these little particulars, these wish lists. Well, I, that's, this, where, uh, that's where I was confused. I wasn't for sure if this was the, the last. Stage. I understand we're not at the DO stage. <laughs> Thank Johnny, you if you want to put a condition it. about parking, you can put a condition about parking uh, at the conditional use application meeting. Well, that's, that's what we're what here I, for. Well, all right. So Let me just I, say, I don't want to do that specifically, but that? he can do that if he we're wants to. We're That's conditional request. use No, meeting. no, I don't think we are because, because it was brought up that if you want a conditional use, it needs to come up right now. No, it doesn't. No, it, no, it, has to. No, it does not. You are right. You do not have to do that. 
No. Am I crazy or did I hear, did I not hear that? It doesn't, it's not required to come up now. I was saying if you all chose to tell us a condition you wanted in the DO, that we would put that as part of the conditional approval, but add it to the DO later. Basically. No further questions. That's what no. I was trying to say. I hope this is good. Yes. In fact, it, my questions have all been answered, asked and answered by my fellow chair uh, council members. So thank you, everybody. You've done a great job of getting everything out there and getting our thoughts up so you see what we're looking for and, and we'll look forward to the development order. Hopefully when the DO does come before us, we could do it first, <laughs> early in the day. I agree. <laughs> all right, take a vote. Eyes have it, so moved. Okay. And no, it's spinning wheels. Well, I was misunderstood. I misunderstood. Well, the bad part is we're going to have to rehash this all over again. Right. The same stuff. Well, when I, it really matters. Yeah. I miss her. Go ahead, Mr. Bowman. <laughs> All right. We have the first reading of ordinance number 2202 PC, an ordinance of the city of Destin, Florida, amending its comprehensive plan 2020, providing for authority, providing for findings of fact, providing for title, providing for jurisdiction, providing for intent, amending chapter one, future land use commons and village planning areas, as generally depicted on the map attached here to as exhibit A, providing for goals, policies, and objectives relating to such planning areas, providing for transmittal to the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity, providing for incorporation into the comprehensive plan, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date, and this is a public hearing all right see now this is a public hearing and there are a few people that have toughed it out to the very end I'm going to give you an opportunity to speak on this particular first uh, first reading of ordinance 22-02-2 PC any any takers seeing none I'm going to close the public comment period and entertain a motion at this time I'll make that motion <laughs> second. I have a motion I have a second is there any discussion yes <sighs> Sorry. No, Mr. Bagby, <laughs> nobody's under a moratorium to speak, so have at it. Even uh, Kevin can speak on this one if he wants. Page 4 of 11, I discussed this with staff earlier today. Uh, the first sentence, the Crystal Beach planning area as the eastern gateway to the city, the intends to, I don't know if that's supposed to say the city intends this area to highlight, or, but that is a needs to be fixed that that sentence is incorrect as written and if somebody could tell me what it's supposed to say i would appreciate that supposed to say is intended to highlight this area is intended to highlight all that destin has to offer yeah yeah okay unless you all want it a different way it's just a typo and then the sentence that begins, given the inherent conflict between long-term residents and short-term visitors, the city shall strive to balance the needs of those evolving and prevailing uses of Crystal Beach. I would uh, ask that you substitute, as we discussed earlier, in recent years, the increase in investor-owned short-term rentals with Crystal Beach, within Crystal Beach, has presented new challenges for the city to manage. We just had a strategic planning meeting where we said it's our citizens, it's our businesses, it's our visitors. So to say that we're going to try to balance, we're not trying to balance. We're our, we've set our priorities. It's our citizens, our businesses, and our visitors. And so uh, that word, that verbiage, which uh, Mr. Buer actually suggested to me. Uh, I would like to see that sentence changed. Mr. Bagby, can I weigh in on that particular sure. comment? Uh, we do have permanent residents that own rental properties in that area. So just keep that in mind. We do. We can change it. That's fine. Well, I, I don't know if I need to get the motion maker to the... Okay, just a minute. 
Thank you. Okay, so there you go. Both of them. Got them. She wrote them down. And that will be in the second reading. Okay. Thank you. Any further comment? Take a vote. Hold on, Mr. Mayor, real oh, quick. No, no, I apologize. No. This is Steve O'Connor here. Um, real quick, just to highlight some changes that were not reflected in the staff report. Um, under the harbor, both terms where festive is included, the APA or the LPA um, requested that those term, the term festive be removed from that planning area intent statement. So and, it would, and it, to put some and, and to put a little background to that request, I think there's been a lot of talk on that panel because I pay attention to it. Nobody really knows what the definition of festive workplace is, and it's not documented anywhere with the definition. So I think that's why they're asking for that to be removed. Is that not the case? That is correct, and it was included in the current in, in what was proposed by staff because that's what, how it is currently read in the in the comprehensive plan. Um, but the LPA, as well as the uh, Parks and Rec Commission, or I'm sorry, the Parks and Rec Board. Um, also suggested that exact uh, verbiage as well to remove the term festive. Okay, so, and so how do we address that, Kim? If you want to include that, just include it in the motion and we'll make the change. Okay. Thank you. I'm good with that, but we make it depressive. No, 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 what I think, you know what I think we ought to do though, really? Uh, Dewey, especially you being a property owner and, 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 and we're in business down there too, is that might be a good case for a, uh, uh, a uh, workshop to discuss to wh what we want the Destin Harbor CRA to look like. Bring the whole, you know, the CRA board is the city council, and maybe we could we could uh, define what a what a marketplace. Marketplace, you're good. Well, in, in reality, what marketplace means to this council can be conveyed a multiple of ways regardless. Yes. All right. Perfect. Okay. So we have a mo amended motion and, and a, approval of the amendment by the second. With any uh, further ado, let's take it to a vote. Uh, vote is unanimous, so moved. And... Now everybody has it. I'm, I'm good, Mayor. Thank you. All right. Oh, he's got something under his Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> Um, so after the visioning session, I definitely got a lot of guidance from the city, and so I just wanted to make a, oop, a lot of notes today. Uh, I wanted to ask to direct staff to help me workshop this uh, revitalization of the environmental committee. I don't want it to be called environmental committee. I think it'll be something along the lines of future proofing or ecosystem, where we're thinking about the whole situation, even down to uh, Councilman Smith's. What's the outside impact? I think there's a way for a committee to not only balance uh, the environment, but to balance each other in the area and, and help connectivity of it all. Could I ask you a question? Um, some of our committees complain that they don't really have a directive charter and direction on what really is requested out of them. I think the LPA got clear yeah. mm -hmm. guidance on what their responsibility is. Is this something instead of forming another committee that could maybe fall under parks and recreation because it's kind of in that It did realm? at one so, time. Yeah. When I first started on parks and rec eight years ago, it was Parks, Recreation, Environmental Tree Committee. Mm -hmm. We had all four. Yeah, the original and committee it, was Environmental Committee. And, and, we, we, and what we did was, is it was we made suggestions on ideas of, okay, houses and properties, you can have three recreational vehicles, a, you know, an RV and two jet skis, or a boat, a jet ski, and an RV. You couldn't have six jet skis and two boats in your yard that encroached into your front yard. So that was part of things that we put into play and it 
tidied up the city pretty quickly because it became an ordinance and it was, you know, yeah. you had and to And that's the rid direction of, of this would be uh, after getting some guidance and figuring out uh, other key players from utilities to waste management to other people who wanted to be a part of this. Uh, the biggest people I would love to see get together on this would be scientists and utilities that would want to come in as a co-op and figure out what we can do. It would be very much... Um, kind of code based and I think we get a lot more uh, scientific backing for recommendations. Uh, obviously they got to work and live inside the city of Destin but I think there's a way to kind of balance that out and that's what the workshop would be for but uh, all in all it would be about all types of sciences from environmental to building to coding. Yeah, the, re yeah. the reason I was asking that, Bobby, is because, you know, whenever we have a committee, it also requires staff resources, time, yeah. effort, and stuff like that. So if it could be incorporated in an existing committee, no. maybe not Parks and Recreation, but, but they got a pretty big committee, and, and we could add to a committee that's already in existence and give a clear charter for them. So then the workshop would be trying to re... Um, Re, re workshop the committee charter. Uh, then I would want to be tasked to help um, with the committee charter, reforming the committee charter. Yeah, I mean, the, at the end of the day, I mean, I think there's, there's not a committee that focuses on this specific issue of um, just the sustainable aspect of it all. I think the Parks and Rec came from that and we got away from it all because um, it got too much. I think you got to aim at one thing and it can't be a tree environmental park committee. I would want people on there that would be representing a scientific backing, a interest backing with like third parties like waste management that we could partner with, create PR incentives with. So it would be more of a strategic aligning of the resources that we have locally. Well, I didn't serve on the parks, parks as in P-A-R-K-S, which has trees and scientific based developments. I haven't been on there, so I was just wondering if that would fall under that umbrella, but you're talking about a whole different ball. Yeah, I wouldn't want to represent the Parks and Rec Committee. All right. So, Mr. Bagby. Yeah, I, I think we're, we're all kind of talking the same thing as somebody that grew up in the committees. We, we just need the review of the charters uh, because the reason the tree board went into the environmental committee was because once we got the tree ordinance and became a tree city there wasn't really a whole lot for the tree board to do so then we merged them and then we had problems with people because their purpose and mission was a little amorphous to say the least so people stopped coming because they didn't want to waste their time so then it got merged into the parks and recreation which has always been very active and so if if we redefine what that's going to be what their purpose is what their mission is what their piece of the pie is i don't have any problem if if we can get people if we give them something to do we'll get volunteers and they'll do it but if it's just hey we want to come talk about you know sustainable stuff they'll do that for a couple of meetings and then they'll stop exactly. <laughs> ray clear my vote deal okay so bobby's made a motion and we got a second. Any the, the, most, the motion is to have for, for Mr. A, Mr. Wagner is going to work with the staff. Yes. To, yes. Okay. 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 Everybody good with that? Yes. Let's go ahead and take a vote. There we go. Eyes have it so moved. Anything else, Mr. Wagner? Nope. That's it. Thank you, Mayor. I asked the city manager to give us a brief report on progress at Royal Melvin Park. I, of course, go there every day, and <laughs> there's uh, I, I don't see at the rate we're going how we're going to get finished on time. So I was just wondering what the plan is. Thank you, Mr. Destin. Um, and on time is are the key words. We're not sure what that means anymore. Um, other than uh, myself, the project engineer, then the project manager, along with the community development director, all concur and did concur a couple of weeks back that we were setting a deadline of the end of February for substantial completion. And as of this point in time right now, none of us have backed away from that date. Um, that would mean that come the beginning of March, we would 
should be pursuing the final punch list and, and tweaking things to get this thing finished up. So barring any unforeseen situations that legitimately could mitigate that timeline, I have no reason to shy away from what we originally established as the end of February as our substantial completion date. Um, there were some issues that were being um, looked at where um, there were items within the project that may or may not have met the, the, the standards that we were looking for. I believe that those, those one of them was a beam, a major support beam for our restroom facility. But I believe that we have come to uh, a mutual agreement of how to deal with that. So that should push this thing forward. And if, if our contractor will get in gear, and I'll try to sit, say this as kindly as I can, I mean, they, he's got a shot at it, but it, it's, up, it's up to them to get in there and, and start moving. Because right now I have no reason to back away from what that group of individuals took time out of their day to come up with a reasonable date that was achievable. And two weeks ago, it was truly achievable. I don't know if it is now or not, but that's, I have no reason to back off that date. Thank you, and that, that's exactly what I was looking for, that we do have a date that we're working toward and I uh, appreciate that. The only other thing I would say is, as we went through the aqua alert discussion, which I could not be more in favor of, it occurred to me that we really should have a motion directing the uh, mayor to work with the staff to bring that to fruition, because really under our charter, that's required. So I'm gonna make a motion that we ask the mayor to work with the staff to go forward with the aqua alert program and make it happen. I'll I got a motion, got a second. Mr. Bagby? I just one thought that I had, I thought it would come back to us, but if we're gonna make this motion, uh, we need to include the aviation assets that this town has access to, besides the helicopters. Uh, you know, when we have 11,000 takeoffs and landings in a month of July, that's a lot of people if we have, if we can, pull that in, somehow communicate, those folks can cover a lot more space than those boats and those jet skis and those everything else. Yeah, I'm sure the mayor will pursue every yeah. avenue he can Yeah, we will. We've, we've, we've got to be real careful not to step on the toes of the United States Coast Guard and their air assets and, and stuff like yeah. that, but that's a great idea. It's, a, it's an issue to bring up. But we're, we're, we're going to try to take baby steps and, and, and try to roll this out. If we start simpler and easier, we can probably get it in place faster for this upcoming boating season. So um, Webb's been great um, communicating with the county staff, um, and uh, so I'm going to lean on him for that. But I'll, I'll do most of the legwork on this working with him. So I, so I appreciate the motion, Mr. Destin. So if you all are ready, any further comments, we'll go ahead and take it to a vote. Thank you for approving that. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bagby. Uh, Ms. Abair. Uh, Mr. Destin took what I was going to do, so thank you, sir. Have a good night and enjoy your hunting, Mayor, when you get out of here. Mr. King, Just I got to go to the bathroom first. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask Mr. Destin to run the rest of the no, I just was going to, just on the topic of the uh, aqua alert, I thought, you know, when we were doing the uh, livery vessel um, safety video you know it we were talking about putting it on beach TV or something like that to create awareness like you you want to create awareness with people put real life situations on their cell phone you know I think it's gonna it's gonna create so much awareness for for beach and boater safety and I just think it's the coolest thing that's all I got thank you guys mr. Smith thank you um, before I have these two things. Mr. Destin asked about Royal Melvin, and that brings a question about our request for <clears throat> proposals for a contracts manager. We made any headway on that the past few weeks? Which Jeff, I don't want to know if that's the right term for it, so. That's right. Jeff, you want to give an update on that? Yeah, the uh, RFQ is out to bid right now, and that won't come back until April. But as soon as it does, then we'll be looking at that and bringing that to council for recommendations. So the RFQ is out for two months and then people apply and then y'all bring them. Bring That's correct. Options. Yeah. Once people apply and we do a bid opening, then the sure. uh, bid committee will review the bids 
and then we'll make recommendation to council. So, uh, you know, I had conversation previous about one of my vision session things was Calhoun Park. Apparently, we can't do Calhoun Park until after rural Melvin. So, uh, and we can't do Calhoun Park until, in my opinion, when we hire somebody to manage that park because the city's going to be in charge of building it. And no offense to whoever's been part of rural Melvin, but the same people can be participating in the Calhoun Park, in my opinion. Um, so, it's very important that the RFQ is handled correctly and quickly, hopefully, and we have good options because Calhoun was delayed for hurricane reasons, and now it's, we don't have anybody to possibly build it, so I hope we can get that going soon. Um, first thing, livery vessel application process. I want to thank uh, the staff and Matthew Pace. I took it upon myself to go through uh, the process of applying for a livery vessel medallion or whatever you want to call it. Um, I went through the whole steps and I apologize. I actually processed it and went, sent a bill to the accounting department and I probably made a whole mess of it. But, um, you know, I personally took the time to do that and, and, you know, I had the documents given to me so I do understand there's steps required to get some of those documents. But having the chance to do it myself, I could speak to what staff has been saying about the compass system and about the easiness of it and how it's, it's there. Um, there's two hiccups that I probably noticed that are outside issues that aren't our fault. Is insurance, get, I get it. Uh, but you can also adjust your uh, insurance renewals in case you didn't know that. My wife's an insurance agent, not, not promoting her, but um, <laughs> that's an option, though. That helps. If that helps move it up a month, move it up a month. But, uh, and, and then two is your landlord situation. I get that. But the process that is currently in place with Compass was smooth. And I commend everybody that worked on that, plus whatever else they're working on. Um, it was great. So thank you for allowing me to do that. Number two, I just, I won't harp on it. I spoke with staff today. Um, they're going to look at, if you're heading east on Legion, you get past the park, you come up to Main Street, we have three lanes. The left lane is a left turn only, straight one is a straight to go to Airport Road, which turns into two lanes, and right to right turn only. And I've uh, asked if they could possibly look at those turns to see if they could be reevaluated with the Crosstown connector funneling traffic down Legion and all sorts of things. It gets backed up, and I'm hoping that um, it might be able to present some options in a feasible way to us. So that was uh, that item right there, and I appreciate their willingness to, to look into that. Um, that's all I have. Thank you so much. Short and sweet for you. I have one quick thing, and that is um, in conjunction with the LDC rewrite that we're doing, we will be, staff and I, will be bringing um, maybe two chapters at a time to council for review at workshops, which we intend to hold uh, either monthly or every other month, something like that. Um, and then I think the way we're going to do it is probably to um, have you all approve two or so chapters at a time via ordinance, and then we'll just put an effective date in that ordinance for January 1st of 2023. And um, that way, by that time, we'll have all of the chapters done and we can have the whole new code go into effect at once. So that's our general plan. Just wanted to make you aware when you start seeing workshops scheduled. Sounds good. Thank you very much. We've got budget workshops coming up too. Um, Kyle. Nothing for me. I'm yeah, packing down up. there reaching in that candy bag. All right, before we go home tonight, man, I, I want to give you guys some kind of award or a gift or like a snack or something for sticking it out. All you people, I appreciate you. Four hours, you get the award. Uh, and, the people, and the people online, too. I, I apologize for the length. Yeah, and all the, all the unseen heroes on, on the web. Um, open it up for final comment for tonight's meeting. Seeing none, meeting adjourned.